don't understand the question. Your family had your ex-husband killed to try to help you, didn't they? No, that's completely untrue. I wonder if she was planning this, like slowly throw her family under the bus and then she was hoping that they would give her immunity. <laughs> I wonder I wonder when you planned all of this. Because remember, uh, Wendy's interrogation or an interview, um, they mentioned that it was like a five hour long interview, but within the first five pages of the transcript, she mentioned that her brother jokingly said that he would hire a hitman or it was easier to buy TV than hire a hitman. It's like, why would you say that? <laughs> She was granted use immunity, meaning that nothing she says in open court can't be used against her. Wendy Adelson repeatedly disputed the state's explicit claims and ever-present implications that Markel was killed for her benefit with her knowledge. All right, so Wendy Adelson is the daughter of Donna Adelson, the woman who we just saw, 70-something-year-old woman who tried to run off to Vietnam. Uh, her brother was recently convicted, and this is actually his trial. So this is from... Okay, it was derivative use and derivative use immunity protects the witness from having the prosecution use their statements or evidence discovered from their statements against them. Okay, that was my understanding. Essentially, this produces the same result as if the witness invoked their Fifth Amendment privilege and did not testify at all. What's it say? She testifies in her brother's hitman conspiracy murder trial. Full testimony part one. Is, it, is there two parts to this? Part of the testimony or back to get the Amazing. Oh, I got just the audio. Hold on. Ma'am, please say and spell your name. Wendy Adelson, W-E-N-D-I-A-D-E-L-S-O-N. Where are you from, Ms. Adelson? Um, I'm originally from Coral Springs, Florida. Wendy, where do you live now? I currently live in Miami. How are you employed? Um, now kind of part-time. That's um, her brother. I do asylum work and uh, I fundraise for nonprofit organizations. Are you an attorney? By training, yes. Okay, how long have you been a member of the Florida Bar? Uh, since I graduated and took the bar in 2006. Yeah, so I didn't know before that I didn't know she went to law school. So her husband, Dan Markell, also uh, went to law school as well. And I was like, did she went to law school and she she let her family do all this? Possibly even conspiring in it? Like, what is going on here, Wendy? <laughs> oh, are you thinking? here today pursuant to a subpoena? Yes, ma'am. All right, and that subpoena confers use and derivative use immunity too. So nothing you say can be used against you in the future. That is correct. Oh, okay, there we go. That doesn't mean you have full immunity from prosecution, but nothing you say here and nothing derived from it could be used in that prosecution. Is that your understanding? That is my understanding. Did you know Daniel Markell? Yes. How did you know him? We were married. When did you meet Mr. Markell? We met in the fall of my second year of law school, so fall Can y'all hear okay? And where did you meet? We met in Washington, D.C. Um, he was working there, and I was looking into a summer job in Washington. When did you get married? In February of 2006. And when did you live here in Tallahassee? We lived in Tallahassee my third year of law school, so from August of 2005 until, I think around maybe May or June of 2005. Wait, so they were married for about six, seven years. What did they divorce again? Was it in 2013 or 2012? Oh my God, they were together for like a while. Six, and then um, we moved married. to Miami for a year because Danny was interested in working at the University of Miami. Mm -hmm. He did not get the job at University of Miami, and so we moved back here in 2007 and lived here until 2014. And where were the two of your, you employed during the time you lived here in Tallahassee? I was employed at the FSU Center for Human Rights and Danny was employed at FSU Law School. Were you both professors at FSU College of Law? Yes. Oh, they and were. Were you living on Trescott Drive at that time? When we were married, um, we lived, I think we rented a house before that, but at some point, maybe in 2008, we moved to Trescott Drive. And is that the home that he was still living in at the time that he was killed? That is correct. Okay. Yeah, it's a no bizarre family. There, is that correct? I was no longer living there. All right. At the time he was killed, you two had children together, yes? Yes. And how many children did you have? We have two children. And what are their ages now? They are 13 and 14. What about at the time of their death? Dude, they are 13 and 14. Oh my gosh. I wonder what they think. I mean, she probably tries to shield them from like, you know, everything. But I mean, when you're 13, 14, you got a phone, you got access to the internet, social media. Oh my God. That's death. At the time of their dad's death, they were four and three. Aww. When did you separate from Professor Markell? In the fall of 2012. Whose decision was it to separate? It was my decision. And was part of the reason for the separation, the two of you having differing views on how to raise your kids as far as within the Jewish faith? I mean, it was a small part, but it was part of it. Okay, that seemed to be something that came up a lot in your communication, so that's why I asked about it. What was the difference of opinion on that? Yeah, um, weren't they both Jewish? I mean, when we first met and started dating, 
Danny wasn't as observant or as, religion as, as religious as he became over time. And so the difference in our perspective on raising kids was about dietary choices and attendance at synagogue, things like that. So in general, he wanted, he wanted to raise the children more strictly in terms of the faith than you. That is correct. Did you move out of the marital home while Mr. Markell was away on a business trip? I did, yes. All right. And did he know that you were moving out when he left for the business trip? No, he did not. Where did you go when you left the marital home? I rented a home in Tallahassee. Where was that? Do you remember the address? Um, Aqua Ridge Way. 3303, sound right? That's right. Okay. Oh, and what was the custody the arrangement once you moved out of the marital home? I mean, in the beginning, until we had a formal custody arrangement, we were just finding ways to share custody. I remember that first weekend his parents came, so I made sure he had the children all weekend while his parents were visiting from Canada. Um, but eventually we had a 50-50 shared custody arrangement. All right, and do you remember exactly what that looked like? Was it week on, week off, or something more complicated? It was something more complicated. In the summertime, it was week on, week off. Um, during the weeks, it was, um, it was I think, what they called like a 2-2 two -two split with Wednesday night being an overnight and then the weekends being every other weekend. All right, but roughly 50-50. 50-50, but that was the, the split. <laughs> And I want to show you what's been introduced into evidence, States Exhibit 56. I know you've had a chance to take a look at this before, but you'll just kind of thumb through it and tell me. Do you recognize the exhibit? I do. Is it a fair and accurate copy of your divorce file? It looks like it, yes. All right. And is it fair to say this was a contentious litigation process that you had with your ex? It was. And I want to ask you about a specific filing in there. It's on page, begins on page 43. And it's in reference to a filing on January 14th of 2013 where you were looking to relocate with the minor children. Do you recall that particular filing? I recall the filing. You said 43. I'm not sure I'm... Oh, okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes. On the bottom there. It's wild. They did all of this just because the judge denied Wendy's request to move closer to her family members in Miami. Because they were living in... Where were they living? Was it a Tallahassee or something like that? So essentially, Dan Marquette would be like, I don't know, like five, six, seven hours drive away from his kids. Of course, he would not want that. And so the judge denied that. And then look what happened. Look what happened to Dan Markell. This is so wild. This is so crazy. There should be page numbers for you. Yes. She flat out lies here. Dude, yeah, I have. There's like so many hours of her interrogation. And then there's her from like the other um, trials as well. Did she, uh, the other two trials, was it in Catherine McBenwell's trial? Did she, did she testify in the hitman's trial? Because I know Catherine McBenwell had two trials because one was a mistrial and then finally the second one, she was finally convicted. Was that the two trials that you're referring to that Wendy Adelson um, testified at? Yep. Call the lies. Yes, I recognize it. Okay, and that's the filing in reference to your motion for relocation? Yes. Okay, and did you file this motion with the intent to not be successful? I'm sorry. I don't understand. You suggested that you never thought that was going to be successful, did you? I think there, I thought there was a small chance that it would be successful, but not very likely, no. Okay. And weren't you thinking, well, maybe Danny would be happy working somewhere else because he's mentioned applying elsewhere, so maybe he'll allow the relocation? Were you well, thinking he that? and I talked about the relocation. So when we talked about it, he thought, well, if I can live nearby in Miami, that might work, and then I could commute mm -hmm. to FSU. I didn't mean for him to leave FSU, but he wanted to leave FSU at some point, so that so was just a matter of time. So you thought it might be successful? Sure. I mean, I thought it was possible, but not likely. All right. And page 46 of that document, paragraph E, references the job offer. The wife also desires to relocate to South Florida in order to provide a better quality of life for the children by increasing their access to close family and providing more stability. They're that should insane close family. Who is family. the close family in South Florida? The close family would have been my mom and my dad and my brother. And which brother is that? My brother that's here today. Charlie Adelson? That's correct. Okay. What's your mom's name? My mom's name is Donna. Donna Adelson? Yes, that's what, her name. What about your dad? My dad's name is Harvey. And where did Donna and Harvey live back in the time frame between 2012 and 2016? They lived at the home I grew up in, in Coral Springs. And how far do they live away from you currently as we sit here today? Currently, um, depends on Miami traffic, but anywhere between 15 minutes and an hour. Right. And what kind of a relationship do you have with your parents as we sit here today? I have a good relationship with my parents. And has that always been the case? I would say so. Can you describe the relationship that your mom has with your boys? I think it's very loving. I think she's a very dedicated grandmother. She spends a lot of time with them, doesn't she? She does, yeah. And when they were little and you first moved there after Danny's death, how much time was she spending with them? When I moved there after Danny's death in 2014. How much time was your mom spending with the boys? I mean, we were all living together at that point. So, I mean, we were spending every day together. How were your parents employed? Are they retired now? They're retired now. What are they retired from? Um, my dad was a dentist, and my mom used to coordinate, um, kind of be like an office administrator at his practice. And did she write the checks at the practice? Pay yes. Checks? Mm -hmm. She handled all the bookkeeping. What was the name of the practice? Nicole, chill. Woosah, okay? It's okay. Chill a little bit. <laughs> yes. 
the name changed over the years, um, but probably the name when they retired was the Adelson Institute. And were your parents wealthy at the time that your husband was murdered? I mean, my parents worked their whole lives to support us, right? Mm -hmm. so yes. I think the business did well for a period yes. of time. Yes, just say yes. About $2 million in profit each year just between say yes. 2013 and 2016, sound right? They never right? talked to me about money, so I have no idea how much the business made. At any your parents offered your husband a million dollars to let the kids relocate to Florida, and you're going to sit here and say, oh, they're not wealthy? Just say yes. Just say yes, they're wealthy. Who fucking cares, Wendy? Give them point. Did you discuss your marital problems with your mom at all? I did, yeah. Okay, what about the resulting legal issues? Was your mom read in on those things? I mean, I definitely updated her about the results of the relocation when that petition got denied, but not kind of the ins and outs of every part of our divorce. What about your dad? Was he invested in your divorce I mean, status? I think the same as my mom, just worried yes. about me and yes. worried about the boys. Mm -hmm. What about your brother? Did he take an interest in the ins and outs of your divorce? No, not really. Did he need to protect? You know, I'm actually surprised they didn't take the route where they were saying that like, oh, Dan Markell was like so abusive to Wendy and that's why we were so worried about her. But I feel like the reason why they didn't take that route was because they didn't want to show that they had a reason to hire someone to kill Dan Markell. Because then obviously, you know, if there was some abuse going on, it would be like, okay, well, maybe the Adelsons were so desperate and that's why they did this. But like, I don't know, man. I, I, I thought they would say something like, oh yeah, Dan Markell was really abusive and stuff like that. But they probably thought they were never going to get caught and that it would never happen, that the police will look into them and stuff like that. Do you from Dan Markell? Um, no, I mean, I don't think I need protection. <laughs> were you physically in danger from Dan Markell? No, I wasn't in danger. Did the litigation re revolving around the divorce and the subsequent issues that arose, did that impact your family back in South Florida? I mean, only to the extent that I think they felt bad for what I was going through. But Wait, I have a question. If someone blocks you on YouTube, could they still see your messages or they just can't see you? How does that work? Like, for example, right, if I blocked Ozzy, could I still see, could Ozzy still see my messages? I, I'm just curious. I don't know how YouTube works when it comes to blocking. I'm going to show you an exhibit that I've marked as State's Exhibit 59. Sorry, 57, Your Honor. I've seen this one before as well. Does that one look familiar? I don't remember it, to be honest. It's from 10 years ago. Take a moment to look through it. Sure. Hold on, let me, see, let me read this. I don't know what even happened. I was uh, listening to this. Uh, let's see, what happened? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Oh, wait, hold on. This goes pretty far back. Did I miss this? Wendy should be wearing bright red, white. Sorry, I'm just catching up to see what you guys are talking about. Chopper, she's probably in her head blaming Harvey for not finding flight with her <laughs> departure. No, she would have get she they would she would have gotten nabbed. I think they should have left before Charlie Adelson was found guilty. Okay, if they were planning on leaving, they should have left before and then afterwards, you know, see if it was guilty or not, and then come back or maybe not come back. Right? They should have done it before. These people think they were so goddamn smart. It's all good. We're having a good day. <laughs> when you're done, I'll. A lot of opposing counsel take a look at it, but go ahead and... I think she's being evasive. I actually it. believe her when she says she was... Really? When she was not involved, but I've been wrong about people before. I thought Katie was innocent. I don't know. I mean, honestly, from the limited stuff that I've seen from um, from her so far, the her driving by the day Dan Markell was murdered, taking a long way to go to the liquor store, and then her saying that, like, oh, you know, she saw, like, police tape, and then police was like, well, if you saw the police tape, you would have been, like, all up in the house, and you would have known that something happened to her husband. I don't know. There's just some stuff about her story where it just sounds really, 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 really bad. And I don't know. Maybe maybe she wasn't like, I, I don't fucking know. I, all I know is like, from what I've heard so far, it just sounds bad. But, you know, I'm, I'm willing to see what she says on this uh, when she's on the t <laughs> on the stand. Maybe maybe she'll say something where I'm like, oh, my God, Wendy is like not involved. She's also a victim as well. We'll see. <laughs> They should have left before they watched your channel for Vietnam. <laughs> All right, I'm going to skip through this. Where are we at right now? 1340. Okay, so Wendy is reviewing the documents. She's looking at it. There's music. All right, are those emails between you and your mother? Um, I don't think I responded. I think they're just emails from my mom to me. No. Okay. Mostly yeah. all from your mom? Yeah. Okay. And the email address is, I think it's something like Wendy Harvey. It, can you tell from the content that it's your mom typing yeah. rather than your dad? Yeah. The email is Donna Harvey, my two parents' names. So they, they've they been married over 50 years. So they have a joint email address. So it's it's from both of them. Okay. So what I want to draw your attention to Harvey is up in this. page two of that exhibit, that first paragraph there above the word response. Did you have an opportunity to read that? I read it real fast, kind of but scanned. I can, I can read and, it. And what I want to draw your attention to is specifically 
the part that reads, your father has made numerous trips by plane for weekends and changing the patient schedules around so he can continue to spend significant time with the children. Um, did you, are you objecting to that? Who's bumbling? Judge, at this time I'd ask to move this exhibit into evidence. Which is not right right right. Right. No objection. It's 57. It's Thank you. So that paragraph, isn't oh, that- Oh, wait, we know her. Uh, court TV correspondent, right? We, I think we literally just watched her. <laughs> Hi! Paragraph going into her detail name, though. about how the issues surrounding your divorce and litigation is financially impacting in a negative way your parents' business. That's what my mom says here, yes. Okay, and it also says, additionally, this loss of income affects my family because my older brother, also a dentist, purchased the practice for my father in mid-July 2012. He has a Although, I think, um, Chopper, I think there may be times, though, where there is someone that is innocent that needs that would still get immunity. I'm trying to think. I'm sure we can find a case where there's someone that's innocent, but, but would still be granted immunity. Um, like sometimes like if you committed a crime that you don't want the government to go after you for, but that will link you to like the story when you're going up there and testifying, I think that would probably count as like immunity as well, where it's like, they can't go after you for like a separate crime, but you have to talk about it because it actually led to the second crime. I don't know. Like, I don't know. I, I, I feel like there are cases where you have had someone that's innocent, but still be get would still be getting immunity in certain cases, um, especially if it's like for a different crime that's unrelated to this case. A monthly payment to make to my father based on the sale of the practice. I'll look it up later. It isn't fair to him to have decreasing monthly income statements from the practice due to my parents spending so much time here in Tallahassee. So this is an argument that your mom is proposing, right, to help you give you an idea of what might persuade the courts to allow the relocation. Do you agree with that? Yes, that's what she was doing. Yes. Okay, and she's indicating that both your parents as well as your brother have suffered financially as a result of you not being able to relocate. Yes. Okay. And on page, do you have page numbers in the bottom right corner of your exhibit? I have them in the top, so I can see. Okay. So five of. Well, let me look. Give me a moment. So it'll be the second email in your packet, page one of three. Okay. Do you see that? I see that page. Okay. And there's a rest of your life. It's just wild to me. Like instead of, I, I know that they have their ties and their grounds in, in um, sorry, fucking Miami, right? They have their dental practice. Um, Charlie Adelson acquired the dental practice from the dad afterwards. But it's like, if you really, really want to be near a Wendy, a grown ass woman and her two children, then just, you just have to make the sacrifice of just moving there and selling your practice. I don't know, starting over. But the fact that they chose murder over doing all that because it's probably a hassle. It's just so wild to me because murder is a fucking hassle too because you got to hire people. You got to make sure they don't talk. You got to make sure they don't blackmail you. Like these people are like, I don't know, it's just so wild to me how they thought they were so freaking smart. But really, they just, they were not. Highlighted or underlined in the center in, in bold. Do you see that? Yes. Okay, right before that, <laughs> it reads, however, the rest of your life and consequently dad's, mine, and yes, even Charlie's will be affected by how well you can perform slash act before July 31st. You need to be a good actress when you, or you can be a good actress when you want to. I've seen you in action. You need to put on the performance of your life. Gibbers hasn't beaten the Adelson family yet. Who's Gibbers? Gibbers. Gibbers, she's referring to Danny. And what is... Was Gibbers a name he went by or just something you called him behind his back? Gibbers was a silly nickname that I gave him during the divorce proceedings when he was being pretty scary and threatening and it kind of made me feel less scared of him. Okay, so not something you called him to his face? No. But that was a word that was only used to describe him? Yes, it was a nickname. Okay. Yeah, because I wonder throughout her testimony, are, is she going to make other reference? Like, is she going to say anything else about Danny that's going to make him look bad? I don't know, man, because like sometimes we watch true crime videos and when the person, when people are pointing their fingers at you, what do they do? Oh, they try to downplay the victim, make the victim look like a bad person. Like, oh my God, like they're abusive or they're like alcoholics or they're mean or they're mean to our children. They don't take care of our children. They don't do anything. Like, I don't know. I'm just here to see what Wendy's going to say about Dan Markell. So in this, again, your mom is referencing how everyone's life is being affected by this relocation, including your brother, Charlie. Do you agree with that? That is what she said. Yes. All right. Is your mom overprotective of you? Yes. <laughs> All right. And is it fair to say she's, you know, a little on the controlling side? Well, yeah, because like controlling. But Wendy, how old are you? <laughs> Did she ever try to micromanage your life? Maybe. Yeah. Did she have an interest in who you were dating and who you weren't dating and who you should be dating when you were I mean, single? I think she was usually disappointed that I wasn't dating more. Okay. For example, apparently her mom was the one that chose Dan Markell for Wendy. Like, <laughs> oh god. Well, isn't it true that she would? like not let you drive to and from Tallahassee to South Florida? 
well, I, I used to drive before I had the boys, but they were young and she preferred to come with me and give me some extra support. Hi, so what would that look like if you were going to take a trip to South Florida? Would they come up here and get you or? No, sometimes I would go myself with the kids, but I was breastfeeding both of them. So it usually looked like me breastfeeding a child while I entertained the other in the Okahumka, um rest stop. So okay. it, was, it was pretty, it was a lot. It was helpful to have some backup. All right. And so that time frame you'd be referencing is like the 2013 time frame? Because not around the time of Danny's death, you wouldn't have still been breastfeeding, would you? If Lincoln was three, no, I would have stopped maybe the year before. Okay. So maybe and was it, 2012, 2013. Okay. And wasn't it true that around the time of the death, they were still doing this practice where they would prefer to... Wait, um, no bond on murder charges in Florida ever. Hold on a second. Wasn't there... Wasn't there a mom who was accused of murdering her husband? Wasn't that in Florida? Who am I thinking of? I could have sworn there was someone... Oh, God, I can't think of it. I could have sworn this was in Florida. Maybe it wasn't in Florida. It was like a mom who was accused of murdering, um, I think her husband. And I think it was in Florida. And I think she was out on bond, like house arrest slash bond. And it pissed me off because I was like, dude, why is she out on bond? She should not be out on bond. But I don't know if it was Florida or not. I'll think about it. Who was it? I could have sworn it was Florida. Maybe not. To drive you to and from South Florida. I mean, not every time, but sometimes. Was it Casey? Okay. And would your mom sometimes enlist your brother Charlie to convince you to do certain things in your personal life. Can't really think of an example of that. Uh, well, dating Dave was a big one on some of the materials I had. Yeah, people like Dave. All right, and your mom really liked Dave. Yeah, everyone liked Dave, but we were just friends. Okay, um, did she try, so she would try to get- Oh, maybe it was Casey Anthony. Was it Casey Anthony? Sacramento-based bail bondsman and bounty hunter Leonard Padilla said his nephew, Tony Padilla, will post 10% of Casey Anthony's $500,000 bond needed to release on Monday. Oh, I think it was because um, they hadn't found um, baby Kaylee yet. I don't think they found her yet, right? Yeah, I don't know. Charlie to convince you to date a certain person. I don't think she was getting Charlie to convince me to date Dave. I think everyone liked Dave. All right. And would she try to get Charlie to convince you to do certain things as far as your professional life? What jobs to take? No, I don't she think so. Do would she try to get Charlie to do certain things like um, Is Charlie older? On investment decisions, whether or not you were going to buy a house, for example? I don't think so. I don't remember that. Danny and I made that decision together. Um, once you had left Dan and you were living separately, did you look into purchasing a home here in Tallahassee? I did, yeah. And did your brother Charlie convince you not to do that? I don't remember him convincing me not to. The only reason why I didn't was because I was waiting on the money from Danny from the settlement and he didn't pay it, so I couldn't afford the house. And your mom didn't want you to buy the house, did she? That's not true. My parents were looking to buy a house in Tallahassee as well. Okay. Did you have... Strike. Generally speaking, does your mom manipulate the personal lives of her children? No. Is your mom, like if she's really upset about something or worked up about something, is that something that your brother Charlie is going to hear a lot about? Who's going to hear more of it, you <laughs> or Charlie? Well, if my mom's upset with me, probably Charlie. And if she's upset with Charlie, probably me. Okay, so do you get a lot of that? Do you hear a lot about, let's go back, let's go to before the murder. Did you get a lot of Donna just giving you an earful about what Charlie needs to be doing? Probably at some point. What was Charlie doing with his personal life? What did his personal life look like? At what point? Before the murder. I mean, at what period of time? Before? All of them. Wasn't it just a revolving door of girlfriends? Right, but my mom didn't complain to me about that. She didn't mind that with him. I don't understand the question. She didn't mind if he went from girl to girl to girl. That was acceptable. She didn't really weigh in on it, no. Who talked to her more, you or Charlie? Charlie. A lot more, right? Yeah. At I the had... time of Dan Markell's murder, were your parents extremely angry with Dan? At that point, no. Really? They were in a much better place. Really? I to direct your attention to an interview that was conducted on... This was your law enforcement interview, so July 18th, 2014, and I'm specifically for court and counsel looking at page 27, lines 11 and 12. Do you want me to flip through or just look at this one page? Uh, if you'll just look at that one page. Ms. Adelson, you know my parents are, you know, very angry toward him. Is that true? Oof. Was that, Isn't true? that what you said? Your parents were very angry toward Dan. <laughs> Can I read the rest of the sentence? Uh, sure. So I say, you know, my parents are very angry towards him, but even when they're around my kids, they would never say a bad word about my kid's father. And then on page 288, line 24. That's not what Dan Markell said. 289, line one. And that's going to be. Didn't you say, you know, it's like my parents have more reason to dislike Danny than almost anyone else? Is that what you said? That is what I said. And that's because they hurt, he hurt you, right? And I wonder if she was planning this, like slowly throw her family under the bus. And then she was hoping that they would give her immunity. <laughs> I wonder, I wonder Wendy planned all of this. Because remember, uh, Wendy's interrogation or an interview, 
Um, they mentioned that it was like a five hour long interview, but within the first five pages of the transcript, she mentioned that her brother jokingly said that he would hire a hitman or it was easier to buy a TV than hire a hitman. It's like, why would you say that? <laughs> I don't know. I, I Maybe she was leaving like cookie crumbs to like lead it to her family. That way, you know, because she probably thinks that like, you know what, we're probably gonna get caught. Like, there's no way we have three hitmen or like two hitmen and one woman who hired the hitman involved. And there's no way they're not going to speak. So I wonder if she like did this on purpose. I was saying that in the context of talking to law enforcement for hours and hours and trying to help them figure out who might be responsible. Right. And who did you tell them might be responsible? Your brother. Well, I told them many, many people. But are you asking about this particular moment right here? You told them your family might be responsible. <laughs> or potentially someone to do with a former student or his current girlfriend. I mentioned lots of people that I thought could be responsible. Okay. And of the lots of people that could have been responsible, your family as well. Yep. Because they might have done this thinking it would help you. Yep. I mean, that's what happened, right? I'm sorry, I don't understand the question. Your family had your ex-husband killed to try to help you, didn't they? No, that's completely untrue. And back to the divorce, the petition where Danny is responding to your petition for the motion to relocate. Are you familiar with that filing or do you need to take a look at it? I need to take a look at it. All right, it's going to be page 79 through 101. And this is back to our exhibit. Yeah, do you think they're going to they're going to convict Donna first and then go after Wendy? And in this filing, doesn't Mr. Markell say, quote, the husband affirmatively alleges that the wife helped herself to non-marital assets, including money and stocks owned prior to marriage, as well as numerous personal non-marital belongings of the husband, such as luggage, bicycle, tennis racket, and family heirlooms. The wife has refused to return these items or to allow the husband into her home to see what other personal belongings were taken without his permission or acquiescence. Oof. So my point is, he's accusing you of theft in this paragraph. Those are the words that are here, yes. Yeah, and, and he's very adamantly objecting to your relocation, right? I, on page 82, it says the sole stated reason the wife seeks to relocate is so that she can be closer to her parents. Was being near your parents the sole reason that you wanted to relocate? No. It wasn't the sole reason stated in your petition? It wasn't the sole reason stated in my petition, and it wasn't the sole reason that he and I talked about before I filed the motion to relocate. Why was he so adamant and so confident that this was the real reason you wanted to be down there? I think there's a lot of things in these pleadings that are not true. So. Just because it says something doesn't make it true. Sure, but did he know that your mom was just grinding on this issue of trying to get you down there? He would have had no that, idea. He wouldn't have been, that wouldn't have been known to him? I don't think so. Hmm. Yeah, it was their way of getting at Dan Markell, their way of hurting him. And then when he won and the judge didn't allow Winnie to relocate, that must have hurt their ego so freaking much. But he was accusing you in these pleadings of all kinds of stuff, right? I mean, I'm not saying it's true, but hiding financial so assets, hurt. failing to disclose things kidnapping his kids in the middle of you know his business trip all those sorts of things right yes he said lots of oh was that what it was they already said she lied about the police if there's no uh tape block in the street oh did i misunderstand that i thought the tape was like where the actual house was i think she made it seem like the police tape was blocking like the entire road or something but maybe i misunderstood that thanks all right and you said a lot of things too there's filings going both ways that are pretty venomous would you agree with that i would not agree with that yours were pleasant i'm not saying divorce filings are pleasant but mine were not venomous okay did your mother, Donna Adelson, re review the uh, filing in which Dan Markella is accusing you of this theft and all this stuff? I don't remember if she did. What about the one where Dan Markell is asking that your mother not be permitted? I mean, even though she has immunity, they can still go after her for perjury, can they not? Yeah, because I don't think immunity covers your ass if you're perjuring on a fucking stand. I don't remember if she did. <laughs> what about the one where dan markell is asking that your mother not be permitted to have unsupervised visitation with the kids my mom never saw that because after he filed that he then asked my parents to babysit the kids and my mom baked him banana bread gave him a hug goodbye so there was nothing truthful about that pleading that he filed my mom never saw it why do you think he filed that he was really angry at me for leaving him okay so he didn't really want to limit your mom's visitation with the kids no and that's evidence babysit after he filed that evidence by the banana bread and and so she didn't even know about that filing she never knew about it okay and when she uh laid all those options out in that email to you about other options that you could take to reload to uh secure the relocation as far as bribing remember that converting the christian children to christianity remember that suggestion I sure do okay um what did she put in there that she what viewed as your right. most non-negotiable and most important part of your divorce i don't know do you have something i can see states exhibit 57 So you want me to read what she said here? I want you to answer the question. What was the most important part? Of the divorce for my mom. Yes. It says here that for her it was relocation. All right. And did you have two eight-hour mediations in your divorce? We had two very long mediations. I don't remember exactly how long they were, but they Did they like result a in a resolution? No. 
Was Mr. Markell seeking to depose your mom as part of the divorce? Okay, sorry. Um, so she mentioned that Dan Markell put in a motion to have supervised visits whenever the grandmother would be near the kids because apparently she was bad mouthing Dan Markell to the kids and he didn't want that to happen. But what Wendy is saying, Wendy was like, well, actually, my mom never saw that motion, but I'm sure Wendy probably saw that motion, right? Because then Wendy could have just told her mom verbally. Or is Wendy also saying that like, oh, at that time, I didn't see that motion as well. No, she would have got notified by her lawyer. I mean, Wendy, you could have just told your mom and then your mom would have heard about it, but even more pissed. And maybe when she made the banana bread, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I would trust banana bread from Wendy Adelson or sorry, Donna Adelson. Uh, I don't know, man. She might be poisoning it. But okay. Um, and then going back to, sorry, there was something else that they mentioned that I want to talk about. Um, oh, got it. I forgot. It left my mind. Oh, yeah. Bizarre to me that you have a Jewish family threatening a Jewish husband that you know what? We're going to convert your kids to Christianity. What, what a fucking weird threat. <laughs> so weird. Remember that? Do you know if it ever happened? I don't think it happened. I don't remember it. Was the prospect of that upsetting to your mom? I don't think so. I don't remember it. So I don't remember talking with her about it or. Did your mom call Dan any disparaging names around this time frame? Well, I just read them in the emails, but okay. I don't remember them independently. Okay. Did yeah. I heard that um, they usually don't go after people for perjury. But what about people who testify with immunity and then they perjure? I wonder if that's like more of like a higher chance of going after you for perjury. But I did hear that as well, because like they usually don't want to go after people for perjury because they don't want to like convince people to like not like, I don't know, I guess like they don't want people to like have an incentive to like not testify because then they're scared of being, you know, convicted for perjury. But I don't know. I wonder in her case if it's like a little more specific, a little more special. Maybe not. Did she call him an asshole? Yes. A narcissist? Yes. A bully? Yes. Religious zealot? Yes. Bastard? That I don't remember. Page five. Okay. This is all an email? Is it page five from the first email? Yes, if you'll just go through by the physical Look at pages. Charlie just smiling there. Oh my God, Charlie, dude. I see, yes. I'm sorry, what was your answer? Yes. Fucker? Yes. Oh my God, Charlie, you hired people but to kill the this man. You can't even keep it together. The half by the different lawyers that you had and all of the um, emails that your mom sent, he was never described as abusive. I mean, he was described as emotionally abusive, yes. Can you show me where he was described as emotionally abusive in any of those items? Well, not by my mom, but in the pleadings. Okay, show me that. It's gonna take me a while to find it. Okay, well, it's you not in there, but you can get back to me. Well, it, it, it is in there. So would you have to review the whole file in order to find that, or could you give us a starting point of which filing it might be located in? It might be under the petition to relocate it might be under the initial divorce proceedings okay. it wouldn't be in emails from my mom but it would take a while to find it. it might be in the depositions okay did you view yourself as being stuck here in Tallahassee once the relocation was denied I didn't I mean I had a really nice life here I did not view myself as being stuck would you please turn to pay yeah because I think the important part is like not actually being charged with the perjury but having that immunity taken away if they realize that you perjured I wonder how often that happens Page 176 in that exhibit in front of you. Did you describe yourself in that filing as being stuck in Tallahassee? I don't see it. You said it was highlighted, but there's nothing highlighted. Okay. 176 mm -hmm. on my page. She told him that Charlie tried but didn't feel she wanted him to do it or at least poke around enough to be blamed. I see the word stuck. I, I found it. Okay. So did you describe at least in one occasion being stuck? In no, I don't think going to law school helps you lie even more. I think this, this is just a family full of like deceitful people. Um, she went to law school and then I think she served as a law clerk for a couple of years. And then afterwards, um, she worked at FSU with Dan Markell. And then now what does she do now? She said she does like charity stuff, raises money or something like that. Um, and something else I forgot. In Tallahassee? No. Can I read the sentence? Sure. So it says... The husband has made it difficult for the wife with her colleagues at her current position due to his statements and actions. And the husband's intent is to relocate to a larger area at some point. So the wife is merely stuck in Tallahassee until the husband decides that the time is right for him to leave. Right. Meaning, did, had he accepted a job anywhere else by the time that he was murdered? No, he hadn't yet been offered a job, but he was always looking. Okay. So he was just going to move and just let you have the kids at that point? He probably would have done what I did, which is have a conversation and see if it was a place that made sense for both of us to live. And would you have moved to wherever he got a great job and started a new life there? Potentially, yeah. Hey, fire. Did you like Tallahassee? I did. 
And you said, I think you did say this, but let me clarify, was your mom aware of the order denying relocation? My mom was aware of the order denying relocation. And what about your brother? You're good, Nicole. You're fine. You're fine. Charlie, was he aware of that as well? I'm sure yeah. my mom would have said something to him. All right. So did your mom suggest any ways that you might coerce Dan Mar Markel to let you um, move with the kids to South Florida? Ah, oh, I think that's what I remember. Immigration law. Uh, she did practice briefly as an immigration lawyer at a law clinic at the university. Uh, she actually married Dan after they finished law school, and then they had the two boys. Yes, I think we, we talked about that before. We did. And for this, I'm referring back to those emails. And in particular... The bribe. So another bribe to get him to allow relocation. I'm on page five of five of the first email. She remembers everything during cross examination. Oh, dude. For <laughs> another bribe to get him to allow relocation should be the offer of plane tickets so that he can fly back and forth, right? So you're going to potentially offer this big monetary benefit that would allow him to fly back and forth to work. Is that the idea? I never said that I was going to do any of that. Okay, was that the idea that your mom had? That was the idea. All right, and the amount of the bribe is going to be, or was at least discussed as being a million dollars. Is that right? That is what they said. Okay, and did you agree with that? No. Would that have worked? I have no idea if it would have worked, but... You think it, he it, might have taken a million bucks to let his kids go? Well, he wasn't letting his kids go. He would have moved to South Florida. You think I, he might have taken a million bucks to let his kids go? Well, he wasn't letting his kids go. He would have moved to South Florida, and he would have commuted back and forth to his job. So, maybe... Well, then why wasn't it offered? Because I didn't want to do it. All right. What about the idea that you could try to threaten? And this was coming from Dana Adelson. This is the emails written by her. Not Dana. Donna. Dan to Dana, Donna, convert whatever. the kids to Christianity <laughs> so that they can fit into the Bible belt here in Tallahassee. Is that something your mom suggested in these emails? My mom did suggest that. Okay. And specifically, this is on page seven of the exhibit. Let Dribbers know that your children will be baptized in the Catholic Church, have a picture made of them in front of the church, all that kind of thing. That's what, what your mom suggested at one time. She did, yes. Yeah, that's wild. Using the children as a tool to get at the person that you don't like. Like, these people, they say they care about the children. They don't care. They just care about themselves, honestly. Okay, and, and did you do any of those things? <laughs> no, I don't even think I responded They just hate that. losing. Do you know whether the uh, defendant, your brother Charlie, was supportive of the plan to convert them or pose as converting them to Christianity. I, no I don't think he was particularly involved in this round of my mom's emails. On page 11 of the exhibit, there's an... Oh, yeah. I actually did hear that Wendy Adelson wrote, like, uh, was it a true crime novel? Wendy Adelson book. She, like, wrote a book, and apparently she tried to say that Dan Markell never, like, supported her or something, but if you go to his blog, I think he, like, tried to... Um, like he talked about it. Like he tried to, like you know, like oh, this is my wife's book, blah blah blah, or something. Um, oh god, what is this? What is this book about? Oh, this is our story. Yeah, she wrote a book back in when was this? This is our story. Follows the lives of Rosa and Miela, two young women from different countries who become victims of human trafficking when duped into domestic servitude and commercial sexual exploitations. Um. Uh, I forgot someone made a mention about this book um, oh yeah that's her Wendy Adelson when did she write where is the year how do I yeah it's on Amazon right now for damn $24 for a paperback <laughs> Oh my god how many pages 20 240 pages oh my god oh dude it's kind of pricey 24 dollars how much is like what's what's a known book like harry potter how much is harry potter i could have sworn harry potter was like 12 dollars to have you get a paperback version <laughs> um you've been out of the loop in the case oh the maya case took all your time what are your thoughts on the maya case did you agree with the verdict and stuff the trial lasted a long time yeah it was like um was it like two months or something or 45 days Indication from your mom that Charlie it, at least has discussed this with her and maybe is somewhat supportive. Charlie brought up a good point when he said that Americans were dropped behind enemy lines during World War II wearing Nazi uniforms to get what they wanted. They had a job to get done and they did what they needed to do to accomplish it. You have a job to get done in a very short time frame to accomplish it. If you dressed your kids up in Hitler youth uniforms and brought them down here, I could care less if it was an act of defiance that would show Gibbers that he's all cap. Wait, is this still Donna? Oh my fucking God. Donna's batshit crazy insane. And bold not in control so it just seems like your mom was pretty extreme about this situation of getting you relocated can I you agree with was, that yeah 
All right, and Charlie was at least consulted on it or had offered some information about it. Well, that was my mom's rendition, so I don't know if that's what actually happened or that was her perception. Sure. Were you involved in the effort to consult a lawyer about the bribe and whether that was going to be legal? I wasn't the lawyer consulted in that. No, no. Were you involved in consulting a lawyer with no. your mom? Okay. Do you know for sure if any of the any financial offer was or was not made to Dan Markell? I couldn't say for sure if they made it to Danny without me knowing, but I don't I don't think so. Is that something they would do is try to negotiate with him behind your back or deal with this situation behind your back? I don't think so. I, think I-, I did hear that she was on a podcast. I haven't listened to that podcast yet, though. You agree with the verdict? The lawyer, doctors, or defense give you a bad vibe. The fact that the defense never provided the review that almost cost the hospital their oh, accreditation. I would have known. Danny probably would have told me. But you definitely didn't extend any of these no. offers or threats. No. When was the divorce final? The summer of 2013. All right, I'm going to switch gears for a minute and talk about phone stuff. Was your cell phone collected by the police in this case after Dan was shot? I gave the police my cell phone and asked them to search it if it could be useful. All right, and around the time phone? of the murder, was your number 954-803-0079? It was. And can you agree that the numbers, um, let me show you an exhibit. <laughs> you will. Okay. Um, well, I want to explain what it is. Okay. Yeah, so I talked a lot about converting to Christianity, but I didn't mention what religion you are. We talked about Dan being more religious than you are, but we didn't talk about what religion you are. So could you explain that to the jury, please? Um, sure. I'm Jewish. And Dan was as well, right? And Danny is, was Jewish as well. Okay. Um, so I had uh, this exhibit, 59. This is not... Numbers, obviously, you don't know the other people. Are those phone numbers accurate, if you know, for the time yes. frame around the murder? Yes. Okay. All right, and then you are also familiar with the wiretap that was conducted in this case? Yes. And did I provide you a disc labeled Disc 107 and ask you to review some calls and see if you could authenticate the voices on those calls? Yes. All right, and for that, I made you a little spreadsheet, which I've marked as 61. And were you able to initial by each call indicating that the highlighted names are the voices of the people they purport to be? Yes. Judge, at this time I ask you to evidence state 61. Yeah, no, 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 no. All right, and if we can shift back to, we talked about your divorce being final. Once the divorce was final, weren't there still a lot of final? <laughs> he looks like Sam Bakeman Freed. I thought he kind of looks like Frodo or like Smeagol. He's got like the big, like teary blue eyes looking thing, you know? Hey, how are you doing today? How's it going? Thank you for the follow. Wait, so she said she never agreed to it, but Charlie said she was supposed to pay him back one third. Pay him back one third for for what? The money that they used for hiring the hitman? Filings that went back and forth between both you and Dan Markell. Yes and no. The divorce was final. We had a final settlement agreement. Mm -hmm. The the agreement was I take my name off the title to the house. He pays me half the value to the house. So for within the first week, I went and took my name off the title to the house and I waited until October when he was supposed to get back to me. He never paid me the money. And so I called and I asked what happened. That was the deal. And he said, I have compelling reasons. I'm not going to pay you. And so I made one filing, a motion to enforce the settlement agreement because he didn't do it. Right. So you believe that he owed you money pursuant to the settlement agreement. Yes. He was in violation of the settlement agreement. Yes. And he was of the belief that you had withheld some financial things from your affidavit and maybe he didn't owe you the money that you had previously agreed on because you had not been honest in the initial disclosures, right? He accused my attorney of having unclean hands and committing a crime. Yeah, and, and assisting you in withholding this money Correct. from the disclosures. Okay. All right, so I want to ask you about... No, it's okay. I think it's okay to have like different opinions because like I'm still learning about this whole thing with like Wendy and like maybe her possible involvement. Um, but yeah, no, I think it's good to hear from both sides, especially like sides that like we haven't really considered. The motion to enforce marital settlement agreement and hold Dan Markell in contempt of court that was filed. You may need to refresh your memory. October thirty first, twenty thirteen. But now, as I learn more about this, I might become more passionate about it. So we'll see. <laughs> Exhibit 56. I'm chill right now because I'm learning. Have you <laughs> take a look at this? Is going to be on 338. All right, could you just read the title, the caption of that filing? Motion to enforce marital settlement agreement and to show cause why the former husband should not be held in contempt of court. What does it mean to be held in contempt of court? It means not to be doing what the court has asked you to do. What can happen to you if you're held in contempt of court? The husband? I don't know, really. Could you be jailed? I don't know. 
right? And when was this filed? This was you filing it, right? I mean, you're the client. Right. And you're I've, asking that he be held in contempt. And I you don't filed know what this, that means? I mean, I, at the time I filed, which was 10 years ago. Oh, okay. We'll refresh your recollection with okay. the document. It goes through 340. Okay. I have it. Okay. So what was it you were asking for in this motion? It was what I just mentioned. So basically, I took my name off the title to the house. He <coughs> never paid. This was asking him to pay. Cough up the money or be held in contempt. Yep. Okay. And what day was this filed? This was filed on October 31st, 2013. All right, so Halloween of 13, and that's the same day that you backed out of the contract to purchase the house in Tallahassee, right? I don't remember, remember that? what day that was. Okay. Do you remember that it was your brother, Charlie, that specifically convinced you to back out of that particular house deal? I don't, actually. I don't remember that. Yeah, that's the part that I heard about Wendy driving pretty close to Dan Markell's house uh, when he was murdered. And they were like, why would you take this route to go to the liquor store? And she's like, oh, well, I normally take this route and I usually just take whatever I know. And then <laughs> what else? What else did she say? Uh, she said she was bad with directions. And apparently there was another liquor store that was closer to her house that she could have went to. But she opted to go to the liquor store that was further to her house. But that's that's what I remember. So I could have sworn there's other shit that I remember about Wendy. I know there was like other stuff that she did that was like. Seems kind of weird, but I thought the driving thing was odd. And then her mentioning her brother, of course. But, um, oh, it was like how um, apparently the kids um, never visited the grave of their father. But it could just be that Wendy still fucking hated him, even though he was murdered. She could have still hated him, right? Or the fact that, like, they changed the kid's last name from Markel to Adelson a year after he died. But it could just be a sign of Wendy still hating him, even though he died, right? But I don't know, man. Um, that's why I'm just listening. Just listening. See what else is there? Well, they're like 12. I think they're like 13 and 14 years old. So I think that's what she meant by like, oh, they're just babies, you know, like they're kids. Babes. <laughs> She was walking by the house, was she? Yeah, I hear different things about the uh, police tape stuff. Uh, was this before GPS? I don't know what car Wendy was driving. I don't know if they were able to subpoena like her car records. I know she gave her cell phone to law enforcement but i don't know if they did that like um cell phone ping thing yeah i don't know if they if they got it off her car or if they got it off her cell phone i'm not really quite sure i am not quite sure honestly i mean i can read what's here but i still don't remember don't really remember and after pulling the plug in the house there were some emails where you were saying you can't answer the phone you're crying too hard about the house like, you seem genuinely upset about pulling the plug on the house, but now you don't remember it? Well, it's been 10 years. Walking by during the first attempt. Oh, at the murder with her kids. Oh, the first attempt. Yeah, I did hear about that. I heard that the hitman um, did drive up to uh, Tallahassee where they were, like, scoping it out. And I don't know if they actually attempted it or if they're just scoping it out, but I did hear about that. But I don't know if they actually attempted it. Did they? Years. Sure. So a lot of terrible things have happened since then. It's hard to remember. Um, don't recall. I really liked the house and was excited about it, but it was more than I can afford at the time. That's what I remember is talking with a real estate agent and having her say we would just we'd find another. That GPS that back then the right was one. 2014. Would you have any reason to dispute that that occurred on Halloween of 2013? No, I'm, it probably did. I just I just don't remember. OK. And then a few months later, on February 14th of 2014, there was another filing. I want to draw your attention to page 379. I'm ask you what that document is. Do you want me to read the title of the document? Yes, please. Former husband's counter motion to enforce marital settlement agreements, financial provisions, and incorporated motion for sanctions. Do you remember this filing? I don't remember this filing, but in anticipation of my testimony today, I refreshed and reread it. Okay, and he accuses you in this filing of breaching the marital settlement agreement in various ways, right? That's correct. Okay, and committing a fraud upon the court by omitting the $200,000 in assets from your financial affidavit? That, that is what he was alleging. And asked the court to sanction you? Yes, that's and, what he said. Okay, so again, you're both seeking the court to sanction each other. I mean, them's, them's fighting words in lawyer terms, right? 
Well, I was filing a motion to enforce a settlement agreement, so I, I don't think that's really fighting words. That's just asking the court to complete what it was, what it already said it wanted to do. Okay. And on page 379, um, Dan suggests that the court send a strong message about your malfeasance by awarding him the entirety of the undisclosed assets of over $200,000, right? That is what he asked for. Okay, and then on March 10th of 2014, on page 437, do you respond with your motion to dis- Up until the murder of Dan Markell, were they still in the middle of this contentious divorce battle? Dismiss the former husband's counter motion to enforce the marital settlement agreement that we just talked about. I'm sorry, which, what is the page number? Uh, 437. Oh, Frankie. It's such a cute name. I love it. Yeah, I'll see if I'm naming I'm my next dog Frank this, or Frankie. Do you want so me to read through it? Could you read the caption aloud, please? Sure. Frankie. Motion to dismiss the former husband's counter motion to enforce marital settlement agreements, financial provisions, and incorporated motion for sanctions for failure to state a cause of action, and motion to strike as a sham pleading, and motion to strike as redundant, immaterial, impertinent, and scandalous pleading. Oh, the divorce was finalized. Page 439. Do you see a paragraph that begins the vast majority of the former husband's motion? I actually don't see that. On page 439? Yes, ma'am. I think I have it pulled ah, up. On number eight. Yeah, the vast majority of the former husband's motion contains allegations that are redundant, immaterial, impertinent, and scandalous. Yada, yada. He's making false and immaterial statements against you. His pleadings only prove that he's a disgruntled former husband who cannot move past this disillusion. So it's getting personal. Would you agree with that? My attorney here is responding to his pleading, which was over the top. And this is over the top, right? I don't think so, no. Then six days later, Dan files another motion seeking action against your mother. And that's the one we've already touched on. That's page 441. Is that right? Okay, yeah, because that was my understanding as well. Um, I think I remember hearing the divorce was, uh, like, everything was finalized a year before, and before the shooting happened. Legal crap was uh, money owed and Lindy, uh, windy relocation requests. Wasn't that relocation request a year before the shooting too, right? Hey, Melissa, how are you doing today? All right. Page 441. Yes, ma'am. Yes, that's what we talked about. Okay, former husband's counter motion for enforcement, a marital settlement agreement on parenting issues, and motion for contempt and sanctions. Here he's alleging, again, more violations of the marital settlement agreement, including communication between he and the boys. He wasn't happy with how much... The supervised visits thing, was that um, a year before the murder as well? Or was it closer to the murder? She needs to be careful. Anything she says now will be used against her in the criminal trial. Her mom will go next, and then Wendy. Um, she's got... What is it called again? Use and derivative use immunity, where anything that she says um, while on the stand actually can't be used against her, and then they can't use that to research uh, and to look into even more. Um, fuck, there's a better way of wording that, and I horrible, did a horrible job. Well, okay, let me think. Anything she says on the stand, they can't use that as a as a way to like investigate into other things. Like this, what she says right now on the stand can't lead to other things that they're going to investigate into. Does that make sense? <laughs> but uh if you are found to perjure on the stand apparently your immunity disappears so communication was happening failing to keep him informed of where his kids are failure to communicate about parenting decisions like the kids schooling diet and extracurricular activities and refusal to provide him access to the kids on their birthdays so he's complaining about a lot of things associated with this not just money stuff it's parenting stuff too right that's it and and isn't it in this motion that, yes, sir. Oh, I said that. That's right. Isn't it in this motion that Dan Markell seeks to enjoin you from allowing your mother from spending time with the kids without supervision? Can you please show me which page that's on? Four. Uh, relocation request was okay. It was one year before the shooting. Okay, I remember hearing that. And then denied. Wendy tried to ask. Oh, yet again, that was never heard because he was he was shot and killed. Okay. And then what about the Donna Adelson uh, supervision um, request? Was that a year before as well? 450. Do you see a paragraph beginning on three specific occasions? Yes, I do. Could you read that, please? 8A, on three specific occasions in November 2013, the children informed Mr. Markell, Abba, Dad, Grandma says you're stupid. When, when queried as to why Grandma, the maternal grandmother, would say such things, the children replied jointly that it is because she says you are trying to take her sunshines away from her. Oh, and then also, uh, when we're going to listen to Charlie Adelson's testimony, but when he testified about this, he was like, my children are five years old. Like, they wouldn't be able to, you know, say that, like, someone told them this and then, you know, uh, essentially, uh, essentially uh, repeat it. And I was like, I don't know, man. I feel like um, kids, like, I don't know. My, my friend has a daughter that's like two and a half years old. 
And she comes back from daycare and she gives us the update about like, you know, she gives her mom the update about the drama between her and this girl named Haley. Like Haley hit me. So I hit Haley. Like, I don't know. Five year old, five year old. I'm pretty sure they'd be able to like, oh yeah, grandma said this, you know, and just repeating what the mom says. But Charlie said that, you know, kids, they can't do that. They're only five years old. <laughs> Continue, please. In December thir- 2013. You don't have to say the name. Yeah. Your child. My child, the younger son, further stated to Mr. Markell in front of the former wife, Abba, grandma says she hates you. The children were visiting with their grandparents at that time. That's fucking horrible, man. Like, you're not supposed to get your kids involved in this. Like, do not let the kids know what their shitty parent is, especially when they're like young like that. Like what, three, four years old, right? That's like too fucking young, man. They're trying to poison their kids' minds. Um, wild. Mr. Markell is concerned that continued exposure to such negativity forms a foundation for parental alienation. Daughter refused to give up her phone. Really? Your mom? That is what he is alleging in this document. Yes. Where? Where did you court? read this? He filed this in court. On what date? Um, if you're in my Discord, can you post it in there? Thank you. Um, it will be at the front of the document, right? Yes, ma'am. Page 441. This was filed on March 26th, 2014. And this was the filing that never got ruled on, right? I don't believe there was any ruling on this. And that's because Dan Markell was killed before the hearing, right? I don't know when it was scheduled for. It wasn't even scheduled yet. Okay. It was waiting to be scheduled when he was killed. Mm, if, okay. If, is it fair to say your mom was worried about this motion? No, my mom never knew about this motion. I have a tough time not... I don't know. I don't know if I believe that Wendy didn't tell her mom about this. I feel like if Wendy knew about this motion, which I felt like she would have been alert about it, I felt like she would have... <laughs> she would have told her mom like oh my god i can't believe dan's trying to file this motion to have supervised visits whenever you're around and as i mentioned before danny asked my mom to babysit after filing this motion so i don't really believe anything that's written here well Aww. you forwarded this motion to your mother <laughs> you email. in fact you forwarded this motion to 12 different people oh my god <laughs> so she did know about this motion oh, no. oh hold on a second. i need to get my okay. <laughs> I get my protein shake here. Blood sugar is a little low. Oh no! Do they have evidence of this email? I wish, I wish we could get access to the evidence, man. I need to see these emails. Oh boy, oh boy. Here I'm saying, oh, Wendy probably told her mom, but no, nah, man, they got the email trail. Oh boy. Let's see what happens. Your mom, Jeffrey Lacoste, Renee Griggs, Toba Walsh, Morgan Honeycutt, Gary Cohen, what is the whole family? Edmondson, Trey Hubler, Robert Adelson. Rachel Frank, Jared Reich, and some M E H U L N Y C at yahoo.com. Oh, so Yahoo. if you weren't worried about this, why'd you send it to all these people? I couldn't really say. It's been a long time. Wow. And then a couple days later, we know what happened. Wait, what is the name? What is the name of this prosecutor? What is her name? Is her name Georgia? For some reason, Georgia's coming to my mind. Oh my God. Get her. Get her. So this was in March. So a couple days. I filed it. I sent it to people in July when. Danny's you sent it. I'm sorry. You sent it a couple days later. I sent the I that sent email to 12 different people in March. Yes. Oh my goodness. Couple then you can resume your examination. Thank you, Your Honor. I want to talk a, a little bit about your brother. It is Georgia, right? Okay, dude. Georgia's like, well, if you weren't worried, why did you forward it to 12 different people? And I thought you said you didn't tell your mom about it, but you forwarded it to her email. Oh no, Wendy. Charlie, is he an older brother or a younger brother to you? I'm the youngest of three, so I have two older brothers. They're both older than me. Oh, right, no wonder. The She's the child, baby. Charlie? That's right. All right. And are you closer to Charlie or to the other brother? I'm closer to Charlie. Georgia. How much time were you spending with Charlie back in 2013 and 2014? Not a lot of time. Um, I was in Tallahassee. He was in South Florida. Did really? he work? That was the cell phone that was in the video. I already posted on the Discord. They seized it during the arrest at the airport. There was a little struggle. Wait, sorry. I thought they said Wendy. Was it Wendy or did they say Donna? I might have read it wrong. Oh, God, I don't know where it went. Uh, oh, that Donna refused to give up her phone. Oh, OK. I, I misread it. I thought it was Wendy because Wendy initially said that she gave the phone to law enforcement. No issue. Um, OK, I'll read it. I haven't looked at it yet. I don't think. I might have glazed over it. Work a lot. He worked a lot. Yeah. Hmm. And did he work at one location or travel around? He would travel around. He worked at multiple locations. <laughs> was he pretty successful? They didn't have burner phones. Job? He came up with a great business model for what he did, and he worked really hard and was very successful. Hydration. Was your brother known to carry a lot of cash? I know. I mean, he had cash on him sometimes. I never saw large sums of cash. Did you ever see stapled cash? I never saw stapled cash. Were you familiar with his practice? Oh, man, the stapled cash. Apparently, the money that was used to pay off the hitman was $100 bills stapled into thousand dollar stacks and apparently 
They said that Donna took the cash and she was trying to wash the money, I guess, wash the money so there's no fingerprints on there or something. So when the hit people and the person that hired the hitman was like, yeah, we got the cash. But it was like, it was like damp. Practice of stapling cash together in stacks? No, I never knew about that. Really? Was your brother Charlie protective of you? I mean, when I was a little kid. How much older is adult. Charlie? As an adult? I mean, not, not particularly. Is it fair to say that during the year or so leading up to the murder of Dan Markel, <laughs> they had murder phones? Hitman probably would have given those numbers to the rental. <laughs> yeah, the rental. They rented the car and they use their actual. I mean, I you have to though when you rent a car, you have to give them your um your ID, your driver's license, and stuff, and all your information. So, but yeah, I mean, the actual cell phone numbers. I mean, I think they would have gotten fucked anyways. You know. Oh yo. Your brother. Oh yo 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 yo. Your ex. I mean. I don't think he, yeah, he probably didn't like him, but I also think he didn't spend a lot of time thinking about him. Did he ever like him? Yeah, I mean, I think they, they got along fine. Did your brother ever mention hiring a hitman to kill Dan Markell? No. I'm gonna turn your attention to your law enforcement interview, and I'm referring to page 25, lines 13 through 15. Oh, Wendy. Can you find it? Yes. Quote, it was always his joke. He said, I looked into hiring a hitman and it was cheaper to get you this TV. Is that what he said? Mm. That was a joke that he made, yes. And hiring the hitman, that was to kill Dan Markell, right? That was the joke. That was the joke that he made in poor taste, yes. Not to kill someone else. No. Well, he never used his name. Okay. Well, he's hiring you the TV because it's cheaper as a divorce present than a hitman. Who else would he be hitting with the hitman? I never really thought about it because because it's... No. Well, he never used his name. Okay. Well, he's hiring you the TV because it's cheaper as a divorce present than a hitman. Who else would he be hitting with the hitman? I never really thought about it because it was not a thing that he meant. He just made a bad joke. Well, you repeated the joke, didn't you? He repeated the joke. Didn't you also repeat the joke? To other people? Yes, like Jeff Lacoste. I never said that to Jeff Lacoste. You didn't tell Jeff Lacoste that... How long did her and Jeff Lacoste date for? Jeffrey Lacoste police interview, Goldmine. The Marcos will sue for the money for the children and win big. Jeff's interview is a must watch. Okay, um, can you guys link the interview in my Discord? George is a poor love. <laughs> Your brother oh got you that TV as a divorce present because it was cheaper than hiring a hitman. I may have repeated that joke in the context of the TV. Yes. All right. And who is Jeff Lacasse? Jeff Lacasse was a person I dated For in how long? 2013. And did you tell Jeffrey Lacasse shortly before the actual murder that your brother really had looked into hiring a hitman? I did not. Did he buy you a TV as a divorce present? Yeah, because I think Jeffrey Lacasse said that Wendy told him that. And she probably was not happy. She was probably not happy when she heard about that. Did my brother buy me a TV as a divorce present? Yes, sorry, I should have yes. clarified that. And was the TV that your brother bought you as a divorce present the same TV that was being repaired on the morning of the murder? Yes. Did your mom text you that morning that the repair guy was coming to repair the TV? I don't remember that. God, they're Why so Why would cringe. your mom have been involved in your TV repair appointment? Exactly. Because I didn't purchase the TV. The TV was a gift that my brother paid for, but my mom went and got it and he reimbursed her. So the contract would have been under her name and her number. So when the, when the repair guy- Oh, I wonder that's- What did she buy? It's at Best Buy? I mean, they could just fact check this easily. It was coming, they may have called or texted the number on the account instead of my number. Okay. And after the murder, do you recall going to a dinner where you got sick at the table? It was about a month later, and yes, I remember. Where did that dinner occur? Was that here in Tallahassee or somewhere else? No, it was in Miami. All right, and was it like a, out at a restaurant? It was at a restaurant. All right, and when we say you got sick at the table, did you actually vomit at the table? I threw up at the table. All right, and did you ever hear your brother refer to that particular dinner as a celebratory dinner? No. Did you tell Jeffrey Lacoste that your brother called that a celebratory dinner? Oh, the celebratory dinner. I heard about this too. Um, okay, how long is the interview? I yeah, maybe we'll watch that next. Was that a- well, well, Yes, sir. Rule. Was that dinner a celebration of the murder of your ex-husband? Absolutely not. That dinner was the first time I left my house after over a month because I was terrified. And Two if hours? it was a celebration okay. of anything, it was a celebration that I was willing to leave the house and eat a meal. Do you know Catherine Magbanawa or have you ever met her? I have met her. Did you have an independent friendship with her or did you only know her through your brother? I only knew her through my brother. What was her relationship to your brother? They dated at some point. But when did her and Jeff Lacoste break up? Was there anything unusual about her as a girlfriend from your viewpoint at the time? No. So she seemed like a typical kind of girl that he would date? She did. Did you meet all his girlfriends? I don't know. I met many girlfriends. She okay. looked a lot younger than he uh, did. Did you meet Whitney Kick? I did. Okay. And Whitney Kick was after Catherine McDaniel, correct? I believe so. All right. And 
there's a photograph, I'm sure you recall, of you on the beach with Catherine Magbanawa. Do you recall when that photo was taken? I do. Um, it was Father's Day 2014, so nine years ago. June Hi, Gigi. of 2014? That sounds right. So about a month before the murder? That sounds right. Where was this photo taken? It was in Miami. I went down to visit my dad for Father's Day. <laughs> oh, okay. So they broke up before the murder, weeks before the murder, or days before the murder. And then they just thought that he was just like a disgruntled like ex-boyfriend or something. Gotcha. <laughs> Is this that photograph and I've attached the data associated with it? So yes. they dated for like what a year? Is there an accurate copy of that photograph? Yes. 2013 and 2014? Okay. 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 Alright, is that you in the center? That's me. Which one's Catherine Magbay? Is that her? Oh wow, she looks like maybe it's just like the darkness. She looks really she looks like she's like in her twenties in that picture. Oh, how old should she have been? What is she what is Wendy now? Like forties? Oh, maybe thirties? On the left, our left in the picture. And how long had Ms. Magbanawa been dating your brother at the time this photo was taken? I have no idea. How many times had you met Miss Magbano at the time this was taken? I think once before. Okay, how many times did you hang out with her total? Just these two times. Once at, at the dinner when I met her, and then once at the beach for an hour. Was the relationship between your brother and Catherine Magbano serious? If you so for those of you guys who don't know, Catherine Magbano is this guy's ex-girlfriend, and she was the one that hired her baby daddy and his best friend to do the hitman on Dan Markel. No. I don't know. I mean, 10 years ago, was it serious? Uh, not too serious. It never stood out to you during that time frame as like, oh, this is the one. No. All right, so you mentioned you thought Whitney Kick was after Catherine McBanwell. What about June Umchinda? Do you know which one that is? Is okay, June the baby mama? Is. She's not in the picture. No, ma'am. You're one of your brother's girlfriends. June Umchinda, do you know her? I met, I met someone named June. Okay, and would you agree that was also after Catherine McBanwell? Yes, that okay. would have been after. When did you learn that Catherine McBanawa was blackmailing your brother for the murder of your ex-husband? Today. Hmm. So he never told you? No. You testified in Catherine McBanawa's murder trial last year, didn't you? I did, yes. And she was convicted? She was convicted, yes. Of murder? Yes, of murder. Of murdering Dan Markell? Of murdering my children's father, yes. A crime for which she apparently is innocent because she was just a conduit for Sigfredo Garcia. Did you learn that today along with all of us? Well, I learned that someone made that argument. I don't know whether it's true or not true. Okay. You have no knowledge of it? I have no knowledge. In all the years this has been pending. In all of the years this has been pending. Your brother has known who killed your child's father, and you didn't know. I did not know. Mm -hmm. Do you know why Catherine McBanawa was on the payroll at the Adelson Institute? I believe that she worked there. What did she do there? I know my brother met her at a dental office, so I'm guessing administrative work of some kind. Did you ever observe her doing administrative work there? No. How did the killers in this case know that Dan Markell was planning to leave town the day after the killing. I have no idea. Yeah, if I was Jeff too, I'd be scared too. If I thought that they murdered Dan Markell and then he might be next and you know, they both dated Wendy, like, oh, <laughs> this is a batshit crazy family who thought they were the mafia, apparently. When he started dating Jeff in 2013, she dumped him two days before the murder to make it look like he freaked out and killed Dan because Dan heard Wendy. Oh, interesting. You knew he was planning to leave town the next day, didn't you? I did, yes. Did you convey that information to anyone? Absolutely not. To your knowledge, did your brother have that information? I don't know why he would have known that. So if the killers were told it has to be done today because he's leaving town tomorrow, we don't know how they knew that. I have no idea how they knew that. But it would have to come from someone familiar with Dan Markell's schedule, wouldn't it? They would have to find out somehow. I don't know how. Prior to Dan Markell's murder, when were you last in South Florida? Was it this trip that's pictured here? No, because it was my dad's 70th birthday in early July, so I would have gone down to celebrate his birthday. Okay, when's dad's birthday? <clears throat> July 5th. How long were you down there for that July 5th trip? I don't really remember offhand, but my guess is about a week. Did you see Charlie Adelson on that trip? Yes. We celebrated my dad's birthday, the whole family and friends, everybody. Did you see Catherine Magbano on that trip? I don't remember if she was there or not. Did dad have a birthday party? Dad had a birthday party. Was it a big birthday? It was his 70th birthday. And was Catherine Magbanawa at the party? I don't remember seeing her there. Oh, were you had pictures? June Umchinda at the party? I don't. Or Whitney Kick at the party? I don't. So it could have been any one of them or none of them? Or none of them. I don't remember there being a girlfriend with them at the party. All right, so you said the birthday was what, July 5th? It would have been July 5th. Okay. And do you know on what day you celebrated? Maybe his birthday, if it was, I felt like it was a weekend. So maybe if July 5th was a Saturday, then it was on his actual birthday. Luis's proffer, uh, super interesting. Oh, what did he say? That's one of the hitmen, right? Okay, tell me about the event. Who, you said there were family and friends there, about how many people? Maybe like 50 people. What was on the menu? Um, we had paella. 
Were you responsible for securing the paella, or is that your brother's job, or someone else? I, I didn't arrange it, but I speak Spanish, and no one else could communicate with him, so I spent some time helping him. That's why I remember what we ate. Okay. Did your dad get any big gifts for his 70th? I don't remember. Did you... So there was no big lead-up and discussion about some big gift that you were involved in, at least? I don't remember. I'm, I don't remember if I gave him a present. I hope I did. Do you remember what anybody gave him for that birthday? I really don't. Oh, was the murder of this? Dan Markell your dad's big gift? Oh, I mean, that's, of course not. That's a horrible thing to say. What about the, well, what about uh, the grandchildren getting full unfettered access to the grandchildren? Could that have been the big gift? unfettered access to their grandchildren always. Not when they lived in Tallahassee. Well, whenever they could come up and see them, they did. They were 50% of the time with, with Dan Markell, right? Sure, but whenever they were with me, they had full unfettered access. On the occasion that we're talking about Dad's birthday, was that one of the times that when you came back to Tallahassee, your parents rode with you and then rented a car and drove home in the rental car? It was. Lewis recognized Wendy walking by Dan's house during first attempt. Was that the, is Lewis the neighbor then? Who was Lewis? How did she, how did, how did she try to place her ex-boyfriend at the scene? And how long a drive is that? It's about seven hours. During that seven hour trip or at any time you were in South Florida, was there any discussion of a murder at all? No, absolutely not. Yeah, I haven't heard anything about um, Wendy's phone being tapped. I just don't know. Maybe they did and has been presented yet, but I didn't hear anything about that. Any discussion of what to do about Dan? No. Any further discussion about bribing, converting to Christianity, any of those strategies? No, that ship had long sailed. The hitman driver? Any discussion on that trip about the pending motion to preclude your mom from having contact with the kids? No. What was wrong with the TV that was repaired the morning of the murder? I think one of my boys might have thrown something at it. There was like a little crack in the TV. How long had the TV been broken at the time that it got repaired? I honestly don't remember. Could it have been a long time, quite a long time? No, it could have been. I mean, I would be completely speculating. I don't remember how long it was broken for. Do you remember who repaired the TV? Yes, it was um, It was called the Geek Squad. Oh, do they do have you records? Do remember the window that the Geek Squad gave you for when they were going to be at your home to do this repair? I do. I think they said it was 8 to 12 or 9 to 1, something like that. Okay. Would you agree with me if I told you it was 8 to 12? That sounds right. All right. And do you recall what time the repairman actually arrived? No, but I remember they came on the early side. Okay. And was the repair done? Um, no. Why not? Because I called my brother to find out how much a new TV would cost versus how much the repair cost, and it didn't make sense to repair it. It's cheaper to buy a new TV. Yeah. Oh, Donna speaks Spanish as well? The records indicate the repairman was there for about 45 minutes. Does that sound accurate to you? Sure. That's my best. Sure. Why was he there for, for that long just to tell you, like, this thing can't be repaired or it's cost prohibitive to repair? Well, I, Do you I, remember? I, I don't. My guess is he was there to try to see how he could repair the TV, and then he gave me an estimate, and then I found out what the estimate compared to the cost of the new TV would be. Who paid the repairman? I did. The repairman, you're familiar with his statement that you seemed really upset that day. What were you upset about? I have no idea. Maybe were she you was upset nervous. that day? I don't remember being... Oh, yes, I was upset that day. I was upset. I remember... Danny wanted to take the kids swimming, and I wanted to pick them up earlier in the day. Okay, and so, so nothing to do with the TV? I don't think so. I probably wasn't that upset about the TV. Wait, so did, do you think they purposely broke this TV set up so the repair guy would show up there just so they can speak about this TV code with, within her and her family? Like, all this just so they can actually like have a real TV that's actually broken, but then they want to use TV as a code for the murder of Dan Markell? <laughs> she's a repairman oh as an alibi <laughs> okay dual purpose there nasty theory oh god did you ever use the tv as code for the murder that was too no. smart did you ever hear your mom do that no but i wish we had some audio recordings of them planning this they probably thought they were such like mastermind fucking geniuses you know like part of the mafia and shit like do they <laughs> I thought they were so smart. Um, probably the TV broke and used it as a code after. Yeah, it's a possibility as well. Maybe. Or they just fucking broke it. Do you I wonder now the kids are older. The kids might be like, I didn't break the damn TV. I don't know what happened. Mom broke the TV. She was pissed and she threw something at it. I don't know why she blamed it on me. <laughs> Did you ever hear your mom do that? No. Using the TV code for murder. Do you murder. remember on July 13th, 2014, seeing Jeffrey Lacasse at your place on Aqua Ridge? Do you even remember that evening? I don't remember seeing him at my place because by that point we were kind of broken up. So I don't think I would have seen him at my place. All right. So on, on that occasion, you couldn't have told him you wanted to share something with him in confidence. I think July 13th. We had kind of broken up at that point. And you couldn't have told him at that time the statement about the your brother really did look into hiring the hitman. I can't imagine I would have said that. And when did you break up? Oh, so July 13th is a couple days before the murder. He was murdered on July 19th. 
break up with Mr. Lacoste, or when did the two of you break up? Um, it would have been end of June 2014. So not four days before the murder? No. All right, so June, end of June 2014 would have been the last time you saw him? No, 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 I saw him after that. We were talking and kind of figuring out what we wanted to do, but we had we had gone on a trip to Gainesville the last weekend in June, mm -hmm. at which point we had a big argument, and I really didn't want to be with him after that. So at that point for me, I was pretty much done, but there were more discussions until it you know, formally ended. And when was the formal end? I remember seeing him that Monday night and Ooh. telling him I wanted to have some space. Okay, so four, four days. days before the murder? So four days before Danny was killed. All right, Oof. and that was, was that the end, end of your relationship with him? The last, when I told him I wanted some space, yeah. Okay. Okay. Where did you go after the TV repair man left? After he left, I stayed at the house for a while, and I was working on some pieces of writing. I was talking with various friends. I had a friend in town interviewing for a job at FSU. I was making plans to go meet her. The time got too close before her interview. And then I had two friends that I would often meet on Fridays, just kind of last minute. And so we made plans to go have lunch. All right. They planned the whole thing over the paella. When Georgia asked Charlie about TV being code, he said, I wish she would have used any other word, but why would she have used any other word if she was actually talking about a TV? Was that, was that in one of the tapped, uh, sorry, the phone calls that they tapped? All right, so what time did you leave the house to go have lunch? Um, I really didn't remember offhand, but I refreshed my memory and saw it was sometime around 12.45. Okay, so it makes sense that you might have left the, your residence at about 12.30? Sure. Okay, and... Did you go to the crime scene or very near the crime scene on your way from your residence to oh here we go to lunch or to wherever you were going next? No, I did not. So you never turned on Trescott Drive that day. I went to turn on Trescott Drive, but I saw that it had been blocked off by some tape, and so I just kept driving on Centerville. Okay, and when you you had to turn around at the tape, right, to go back I out. I think I tried to turn right and it couldn't turn, so I would have made like a. Yeah, so that's what my understanding that there was tape at the scene, but the tape wasn't like blocking off the entire road. You would have to actually get pretty close to the house in order to see the tape. That's my understanding of it. Hold on, I gotta write some of these notes down. Oh my God. Uh, four days before murder. Can't type today. Uh, Wendy and Jeff L. Okay. Kind of turn, like a K turn. So I'm gonna go back with the tape thing. So you never turned on Trescott Drive that day? I went to turn on Trescott Drive, but I saw that it had been blocked off by some tape, and so I just kept driving on Centerville. Okay, and when you, you had to turn around at the tape, right, to go back I out? I think I tried to turn right, and it couldn't turn, so I would have made like a the kind of turn, like a K turn, and kept going. Was there a roadblock there? With There was tape. Yeah, and an officer was there? I didn't a, see an officer, but I could see a car. A, a law enforcement marked mm -hmm. vehicle? Okay, did you have any contact with the officer? No. Okay. Did you do anything after that to try to find out what was going on down that roadway? No, I just assumed it was weather, or maybe a tree fell. Had there been bad weather that day? No, but it was summertime and there's electrical storms and trees fall, so that would have been pretty normal for summertime. Where were your kids supposed to be at the time that you encountered that roadblock? They would have been at school. And that's at the Creative Preschool? That's right. Who took them to preschool that day? Danny. And who was supposed to pick them up from preschool that day? Me. All right, so... No, she does not. She wears blue contact. No, no, she does not. <laughs> no way. Jeff's interview for all the incriminating evidence against Wendy. The road was, that's what I heard. I heard that the road was actually not blocked. The t I mean, maybe uh, we'll, we'll wait for Georgia to get there. Georgia's probably taking us there. Come on, Georgia, take us there. So did you know for sure that they had made it to preschool that day at the time you encountered the roadblock? I just assumed. I mean, if they hadn't made it to preschool, Danny would have let me know. But did you attempt to call Dan Markell when you encountered what? the roadblock? No, I didn't think no anything of it. I didn't think it was related to the house. Had you talked to Dan Markell or your kids that morning? My kids, no, but that would have been normal. And Danny and I tried to get in touch with each other, but we left. We were trying to figure out where Ben was going to go to kindergarten at the time. And we left voicemails for each other, but didn't get to talk. Okay. Did he leave you a voicemail message that morning? He did. Okay. We talked, I asked you earlier about him being scheduled to leave town the day after he was killed. Do you know where he was planning to go? He was going to New York to see his girlfriend. All right. The message that he left you that morning, do you remember what he told you in the message? Um, I mean, I think it was about our son's school. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I don't really remember. Okay. Included in that was, was... Was it included in that message that he was heading to the gym and was going to be at the gym between 9, 15, and 10, 30? I mean, not like it matters or anything, but I only see her with blue eyes. Someone says that she wore like a more teal color to make her blue eyes stand out more. I don't know. I mean, not like it matters, but do you have a picture of her with brown eyes? Ready that morning? I really don't remember, but that sounds like it could be what he would leave. Okay. Would it refresh your recollection to review a transcript of that voicemail? Sure. So did he say in that voicemail that he left you what his plans were in regards to the gym that day? He did. What exactly did he say about the gym? Uh, about the gym, he said, I'm going to be at the gym probably between 9.15 and 10.30, but I'm happy to chat or meet with you. Maybe we can go for a walk at school or something like that. Let me know. Okay. 
So that particular voicemail doesn't sound very emotionally abusive. Would you agree with that? No, by this point in time, we were parenting really well and we were doing just fine. Getting along great. <laughs> Georgia says, getting along great. <laughs> that was that sarcasm in her tone. <laughs> I'll strike a comment, Your Honor. <laughs> did you talk to your brother on the day of your ex husband's murder? Georgia being a little snarky. And about what time of day did you speak to him? It would have been right after the repair guys were there because that's when I called him to tell him, ask him whether I should get the TV repaired or buy a new TV. Okay. So it would have been morning. How long did you talk to him? I don't remember. Does 18 minutes sound incorrect? I, that sounds reasonable. Okay. Did you talk to him about other things other than just the TV? I really don't remember what else I talked to him about, but probably hey, I would have asked him about his work or we would have caught up. Did you happen to mention Dan Markell's plans to go to New York the next day? I don't see why I would have. Or is it Ms. Trix? Ms. Trix? Hello. <laughs> or we would have caught up. Did you happen to mention Dan Markell's plans to go to New York the next day? I don't see why I would have. Did you have WhatsApp on your phone at that time? I don't know if in 2014 I had oh, WhatsApp. Oh, they use WhatsApp to Now we use it for all the parent chats at school, so it's everybody what? seems to have it, but I don't know if everybody had it back in 2014. What is WhatsApp? Um, WhatsApp is it kind of an app you would use for texting. Do you know if your brother Charlie had it at that time? I have no idea if he had it at that time. Did you ever communicate with Charlie through WhatsApp? Maybe. I mean, I don't know. If I had it at that time or if I had it later, I probably would have. Just not sure. Yeah. I... Did you have any contact of any kind with Catherine McDanawa on the day of Dan Markell's murder? No. Did you ever communicate with her through WhatsApp? No, I never communicated with her at all. All right, let's talk about, well, you communicated with her on the beach. I, I saw her in person, but I'm saying I never texted with her, called her. I never communicated via a device other than in person. Okay. Yeah, I'd be very curious to see what's on Wendy's uh, phone. Uh, I can't believe someone else could have done that to someone else. Especially, like, the father of your kids, you know? Father of the grandchildren. Like, oh, it's just fucking horrible. I'm doing good. How are you? Hello, hello. Maybe we can watch Donald's trial together. Um, what about when you were talking to your brother? Did she ever get on the phone and speak to you? I don't think so. Okay. Um, I want to talk about where you went when you left your residence on the day of the murder. You tried to turn on to Trescott, and then you ended up where? I went... Um... I was supposed to go to a party that night, a stock the bar party. So I went to a liquor store to pick up what they had asked for as the present for their party. Oh, um, here we go. So I went to the liquor store. I picked up the alcohol. I stopped. I think I got gas. And then I went to lunch to meet my friends. And the liquor store purchase appears to have occurred at 1249 based on the receipt. Do you have any reason to dispute that no, timing? that sounds right. Okay. And then from there to the restaurant? Yes. And where was the restaurant located? Um, Mosaic. I actually don't remember. I just remember I would go north on uh, Thomasville Road. All right. And so it was... And is the restaurant where law enforcement came to speak with you and you ended up going with them to the police station, right? That's correct. Oh, man. Should I map this out? I wonder if it's on Reddit. Do you agree or disagree that there have been some financial benefits to you and your boys as a result of Dan's death? I disagree. When did you decide to change the names of your children from uh, Mark Hell to Adelson? So after Danny's like murder, there was a after? lot of news. It just hit the media and there were news stories everywhere. And Nancy Grace on CNN put pictures of my boys with their faces unblurred, just pictures of them. Mm -hmm. And I was terrified. And so when they started school, I started school with my last name, thinking that would keep them safe, that they wasn't, wouldn't be associated with the murder. Wasn't the Adelson name in the press? Just it was not in the press. Hell? Not yet. Oh, hold on a second. That's actually a pretty fucking good explanation. That's actually a pretty good explanation. However, let's see if Georgia says that like, oh, actually the Adelson name it was also in the press. But that's actually a pretty good explanation that she gives because I thought it was really shitty that she changed her children's last name. Well, no, it was like a year after, though. Wasn't wasn't the children already kind of like uh, wasn't the um, the Markel name already in the press? <laughs> Wouldn't have been in the press within that first year. I don't know. It depends on when this uh, Nancy Grace segment happened, I guess. Hmm. Do you agree that you legally changed the kids' names on July 6th of 2015? That sounds right. A year later? So it's actually a year after the homicide. A year after. When was the last time you talked to your mom? Did you talk to her today, yesterday? Um, I talked to her yesterday. In her emails, and we referenced one of them while you've been here on the stand, she talks about you giving performances and playing roles. Did you discuss anything about what you would do here today in court with your mother? Oh, she started them in school with the last name Adelson, but then legally changed it a year later. Can you do that, actually? Can you do that? If it's not legally changed, can you just enroll your children as, like, a different last name? <laughs> no. Were you involved in any way in the plot to kill your ex-husband? Absolutely not. 
Did you know what was going to happen, but maybe not know the details? I knew mm-hmm. nothing. Is that why you went to the crime scene on the day of the homicide? Mm-hmm. I did not go to the crime scene on the day of the homicide. Do you know who all was involved in the murder? Well, I learned today, <laughs> but at the time, no. Okay. Have you ever privately confronted your brother about his role or possible role in the murder? My attorney has advised me not to have conversations with anyone in my family about the case. <clears throat> but you had a close relationship with your brother at the time of the murder, right? I absolutely had a close relationship with my brother. And you're... How soon after the murder did your lawyer advise you not to talk to your family about it? In 2016. Oh, well, was uh, were one of the boys' names Dan for the middle name, and he dropped the. Oh God, yeah, that's that's pretty fucking petty. But like I said, she she probably really hated him. Ah. Oh. Okay, so what about the two years in between? Did you talk to him about it then? I feel bad I mean, for the Markel family. The fact that a murder occurred, but I guess I don't understand the question. But you never talked to him about the suspicions you raised in the law enforcement interview that. Your brother might have done it. No, I did not. You suspected your brother could have been a part of this, right? I suspected lots of people could have been a part of it. But he was one of the people, right? While I was talking with law enforcement for six hours, terrified oh, out of my mind. Oh, got- not, okay. It w- wasn't Dan's name, but it was like someone that was like in Dan's family. Gotcha, gotcha. For them every possible idea, right? While I was talking with law enforcement for six hours, terrified out of my mind, I offered them every possible idea I could come up with. Right, and one of the possible ideas was that your your brother could have murdered your child's father. I didn't really believe that was possible. But you brought it up. You said it. How would you have said it? Is part of the plot for you to be able to have plausible deniability about this? Absolutely not. Is it better for both you and your brother if you don't know the details of this? I don't even understand the question that you're asking me. When did you first become aware that you might be a suspect in this case? I mean, as the ex-wife, I assumed I was a suspect from the beginning. What was your first thought when you were asked if anyone might have murdered Dan Martell for your benefit? I thought, oh my God, maybe if I hadn't divorced him, he would still be alive. Maybe, maybe mm-hmm. this is my fault because I complained to the wrong person. Maybe Danny gave a student a bad grade and they came after him. I just mm-hmm. was trying to think of who possibly could have wanted to hurt him. But you didn't say any of that before. I mean, the first thing you said was Charlie, right? I don't think so. Page 25 of your interview, line 5 through 15, do you have any reason to dispute? Page 25, not five hours into it, you say, Charlie, might have done it, right? Can I see, please? You may. Yeah, let's refresh in your memory. What I say here is that he would never do it. Right under the highlighted part, I say, no, he would never. Page 25, line 5 through 15, I mean, my brother. The one, his name is Charlie, the one I'm really close to. He makes a lot of jokes in that taste, and it was a joke he made. He bought the TV for me this morning that got broken, and then I was talking to him about whether... Oh, look at Charlie. Look at it. He's like, yeah, see, that absolves me. It made sense to pay or fix it, <laughs> or whether I should get a new one. And it was always like, it was always his joke that, like, he knew that Danny always treated me badly, and it was always his joke. He said, I looked into hiring a hitman, and it was cheaper to get you this TV, so instead I got you this TV. And you do say you don't think he would do it, but can we agree you brought up his name on page 25 of the interview? I did. When asked, would you ever ask someone to do something like this? You say not in a million years. When asked, okay, do you think someone would do this for your benefit without asking you? You say no. And when Isom starts to ask you, what good does it serve? You say, I mean my brother, the one, his name is Charlie. Isn't that how it went? This is the transcript, but I think there's also inaccuracies in the transcription. Oh boy. All right. Do you want the culpable parties held accountable for murdering the father of your children? Absolutely. I'm grateful they're already in jail. But not if it's your family. It's mm. not my family. I mean, somebody hired him, right? Mm. Not necessarily. Somebody paid him. I learned something this morning. <laughs> yeah, me too. You didn't want him held accountable if it was your family members. Didn't you tell law enforcement that? That's not what I told law enforcement. What did you tell law enforcement? I told them that the person who did this should be held responsible and that I had nothing to do with it. Page 122, lines 7 through 12. If somebody tried to kill my ex-husband, they should be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. The investigator says, regardless of who it is, and your answer is, I mean, it would be different if I thought it were my brother. But I don't think it was my family. Is it's what different now, isn't it? No, it's not different. That's exactly different what today, I said isn't right it? here. No, that's not no right. further questions. Oof, Georgia. The long list of plans that you went over with Mr. Rashbaum that you were going to have in Tallahassee. This is short. Murder date. None of those plans happened, right? No. Because you moved to South Florida, right? Because I felt unsafe to stay here, yes. And did you feel safe in South Florida? No. Did you buy a house in Tallahassee after the murder? No, I did not. Did you rent a house in Tallahassee after the murder? No, I didn't live in Tallahassee after the murder. Did the boys go to school that fall here in Tallahassee? No, all our plans were broken. What was the purpose of those questions? Of course you didn't. You moved to South Florida. You didn't have plans in Tallahassee if they got executed. Why why were you asked about all these things? (laughs) 
<laughs> I, I don't know why I was asked questions by the defense counsel. The book event that you were asked about, did that event happen? Uh, I didn't speak at the event, but the event still happened. Have you had several events right, related to that book that have happened? I have. And what events were those? Um, do you mean just in Tallahassee or do you mean in other places? Everywhere. Um, I've spoken at various schools about human trafficking and about my book. Um, I think there was one event that still happened in Tallahassee about a year later. And was, is that the only book you've written or have you written more than one book? I've only written one book. What was the book about? The book was about human trafficking and about the vulnerabilities that lead to trafficking, the problems when it occurs, and basically how to recover from it after. Where was the book set? It was set in a fictional town. 2011 was when the book was originally published. Okay, so three years before the murder. What was the name of the fictional town? Hiawassee Springs. So Hiawassee. Is it located in the panhandle of Florida? No, I used to see the name when I was driving from Tallahassee to Orlando, so it's somewhere in between. And was the place modeled after Tallahassee? Hmm. It was definitely somewhere in Florida, but not supposed to be about Tallahassee, no. Who was the central character in that book? So there's three central characters. One was one of my clients, kind of a composite character from Eastern Europe. One was um, kind of a composite character of many clients I represented from Latin America. And one was a public interest lawyer. And was the public interest lawyer Lily? Yes. And is that the character that's sort of based after yourself? No, really more based after a friend of mine. And was Hiawassee, Florida, quote, just a small stop on the way back to what we had previously known as civilization? Is that a quote from your book? That sounds like a quote from my book, yeah. And who's the husband of Lily, the public interest lawyer? You want his name in the book? Yes. I think it was Josh Stone. All right, and what was Josh's? When he traveled almost a mile down the road to get to the tape, I wonder, should I, should I just map it? I don't remember what was the name of the two roads again. Well, I, I think I remember hearing Centerville and... Shoot, I should have taken notes about this. Employment. Josh was an English professor. I'm sorry, what was your answer? Josh was an English professor. professor. Or, you know what, I feel like maybe Reddit has already made a map of Wendy's route. If you guys can find it for me, let me know. <laughs> Where did he teach? It's been a while. I wrote the book over 10 years ago. I don't remember what I named the university in the... <laughs> North the Florida State University? That sounds right. NFSU? NFSU sounds right, yeah. All right, and in the book, does Lily lament, quote, we moved to this godforsaken place for Josh's career? Yes, that sounds like a line Lily would say. All right. When you looked at page 187 of the divorce document on Cross, and I'll hand that back to you. This is actually my copy. Just back to oh, someone actually did a drive. Can you link it in the Discord? See the quote that you read previously from that page? I don't. Okay. It had to do with let's see if I can find it. That, that you were very unhappy in the marriage. I think it's the third paragraph there. I see that line. Okay. The wife has been very unhappy in the marriage and files her petition for dissolution of marriage in August 2012. The husband continues to characterize this as abandonment, and then it goes on to say that he had been disparaging you to some of the folks at the, at the law school. Do you remember reading that? I do. Was that intended to be the place in this binder where you allege emotional abuse by your husband? I mean, I, I think it's emotionally abusive to suggest somebody has mental health. Mm, you're talking about Corey Richards? That's what I made the comparison to. Corey Richards thought she was like this mastermind of like crime shit and, you know, probably the Adelson family as well. Trying to direct people to say this, say that. Like, oh gosh. Ugh, ugh, ugh abuse can't wait for that one your husband i mean I, I think it's emotionally abusive to suggest somebody has mental health issues okay what is the prof's blog you were asked about that on cross yeah it was um it was a blog that danny started with some of his colleagues um to kind of promote community in the law professor world and who reads the plot profs probably prof's other blog. other law professors and people interested in becoming law professors who is on the crim prof list serve? I don't know. Were you on the on the list serve for that prof's blog? I don't know. Maybe she didn't actually write a book. Maybe it was like a ghostwriter or something. I, I may have been on the list serve at some point. Do you remember seeing the post that you were shown on Cross? I do. And the post says something about Danny and I are planning to attend a conference that will begin Sunday, July 20th. Is there any other information on what you were shown about Dan's travel plans post murder other than that? I'm sorry. Can you please repeat the question? The post says, Danny and I, I guess it's another professor writing this thing. Danny and I are planning to attend a conference that will be on Sunday, July 20th. Is that the type of information that's, that he would typically have on something like the Prof's blog or Facebook? That sounds right. 
Okay, but as far as the date he's leaving, the flight he's on, that kind of stuff, would that typically be on the profs blog? I don't, he wouldn't put what flight number he was on, but he would almost always communicate when he was going on a trip. Okay, so going to a conference that starts July 20th mm -hmm. might be an example. Flying to New York tomorrow would be an example. Okay. But not, he didn't not put, a flight number. But he didn't put flying to New York tomorrow in this, on this occasion? No. You were referenced several times, not on direct examination by the state, but by your brother's attorney on cross as a co-conspirator. Are you charged in this case? No. This isn't your trial, is it? No. Is your brother charged with conspiring with you to do a murder? No. Is he charged with conspiring with you to plan a murder? No. Is he charged with soliciting you to do a murder? No. Who is he charged with doing those things with? I don't think anyone. Have you had an opportunity to review his indictment in this case? I have not. Listen, if she, I, I think it's just one of those things where it's like she hated him so much that she wanted to get the satisfaction of confirming with her own eyes that he was gone. He was dead. There's police tape, police everywhere. I don't know. That's, that's the feeling that I was getting. The satisfaction. Who is your brother alleged you have done these crimes with? Catherine D. Magbanawa. Were you on the wire in this case, Ms. Adelson? No. So when the bump happened, are you familiar with the event I'm referencing as the bump? I am now. When law enforcement approached your mother on the street and handed her a piece of paper? Like, I don't know, which is like so stupid because they went through such great lengths of hiding the murder, speaking in codes, scheduling the TV thing, but she just couldn't get over the fact that she wanted to see him dead, probably. That's, I, that's what it seems like. Like she couldn't resist the urge. Yeah. <laughs> when that occurred, who did your mother call? I don't know. Not you, right? Not me. Okay. And once your brother found out about the bump, did he call you about it? No. Who did he call? I don't know. Well, you listened to the calls to authenticate the voices, didn't you? Just, just to hear the voices, not to hear the content of the calls. Okay. And the voices were your brother's voice, right? Nancy Grace did not put up pictures of the children up. No way. I wonder if I could find that segment. Um, Nancy Grace segment. Oh, I don't know. She probably covered so many times, though. Yeah, I wonder if they can actually, if they, if someone can actually find the Nancy Grace segment. I don't know, I have to go through the Twitter. I'm sure, sorry, not Twitter. There has to be like a Reddit about the Adelsons that has like a lot of this information. And the TV shows the criminal always goes back to the crime scene. But I, yeah, look at uh, Koberger. I listened to the calls just to hear who was on them, so I don't know also not content they're referencing. I heard your answer. My question to you now is your brother's voice was on the calls. Ooh, he was go on Georgia. some of the calls I listened to. Your mother's voice was on the calls. She was on some of the calls I listened to. Did you have any secret meetings with your brother post bump that happened in South Florida? No. Dan had a girlfriend? You were asked about Jeffrey Lacoste and the way that your relationship ended. What is OkCupid? OkCupid is a dating website. Were you on that dating website? I was. Were you on that dating website at the time that you were dating Mr. Lacoste? No, I wasn't. And were you speaking, so I guess if you weren't on it, you weren't speaking to multiple men from the website during the time you were dating Mr. Lacoste. And I'll remind you that you provided your phone in this case and it was celebrated, okay. downloaded. Okay. Didn't she was on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? say that you weren't on OkCupid at the time that you were dating Jeffrey Lacoste? I don't know when we say I officially stopped dating Jeff Lacoste, <laughs> but there's a chance that, I mean, I, I don't remember in 2014 whether I had gotten the app and started talking to people before I don't say anything about that. Okay, so my point is there's a chance that he was right. You were being unfaithful or at least talking to other people. He had a reason to be jealous. I think he had some serious jealousy issues that may or may not have been founded. Yeah, I think we got from your testimony that you believe he had serious jealousy issues. My question to you is, did he have a reason to be? No. So he was wrong? He was wrong in June when he accused me of being with multiple people that I wasn't with, yes. Okay. What was wrong with Dan's mother trying to make arrangements for the kids in the event of your arrest? Wasn't that a kind thing to do? I don't think it's kind to put my children in foster care. Wasn't the foster care intended only to cover the time frame that it would take for her to get on a plane and get here? She never said that. You thought she was just going to leave them in foster care? I didn't know what to think. They have a mother. They don't need to be in foster care. But they wouldn't have a mother in the event of your arrest, Ms. Adelson. Wasn't that the intention of the email? I don't know what the intent of the email was. There's no. I was not going to be arrested for a crime I didn't commit. Was it, She didn't know that, though, did she? I, I don't know what she knows or doesn't know. I can't speak does, to that. Uh, does, uh. Did, do Dan's parents know whether you committed this crime or not? I don't know how to answer that question. How would they? Particularly back at the time that she sent that email. It was fresh at that time, right? I'm sorry, what was fresh? The, all the events that were occurring, the arrests. That was two years after Danny's murder. I don't know what she knew or didn't know. I know that my children don't belong in foster care. 
was it a specific foster care that she was requesting be called in the event that the children had no place to go and were going to be going into the custody of the state? She did suggest a specific foster care agency. A Jewish-run foster care agency. A Jewish foster care. Wait, what? What was that cutoff? Was that it? Is there a part three? Why did it cut off like that? Specific foster care that she was requesting be called in the event that the children had no place to go and were going to be going into the custody of the state. She did suggest a specific foster care agency. A Jewish-run foster care agency. A Jewish foster care. How many times have the kids visited Dan's parents since this murder? Many. It'd be hard to count. Countless times? Countless times. How many times have they seen him in the last year? Um, we had a visit with Danny's dad and his, the boy's cousin this summer. We had, we've had a lot of Skype visits. They do live in Canada, so it makes mm -hmm. it... Wait, I could have sworn um, Dan Markell's mom did an interview recently, and she was like, I hadn't seen them for like the last like six years or something. Isn't that what she said? She didn't see them for the last six years. Long time. She said they saw each other countless of times. Cousins. A little bit harder to have in-person visitation, but every time they've asked for it, we've arranged it. Every time they've asked for a visit, you've arranged it. Yes, ma'am. Oh, George is on to something. How many times have they seen him in the last five years? Again. We countless? Have, as in the last five years, that overlaps with the time when they tried to put them in foster care. So since we've established, since we've reestablished relations, we've seen them about twice a year, whenever they come down to Florida. So in the last five years, they've seen him how many times? Two or three times a year? How about that? Has this been a major issue between you and Dan Markell's parents? This issue of them having access to the kids? The issue of them trying to put them in foster care is a major No, ma'am, that's yes. not my question. I'm sorry. Have, hasn't the issue of them trying to get access to your kids been a major issue, at least for them? Since they tried to put the children in foster care, yes. Before that, it was not a problem. Are you familiar with their work across the street of the legislature trying to get bills passed oh. to give grandparents rights to see kids? I'm familiar with their grandparents' legislation, but it's actually unconstitutional. <laughs> Are you mad? Are you are you angry that according to your brother's theory, he and your mom have known who killed your children's father since 2014, and you weren't told who it was? And we're angry that somebody killed my children's father. Mm. So you're not mad about that, that they knew this whole time? That's what they're saying. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? That's the theory of the defense in this case, is that, they, that he's known the whole time. Your brother's known what happened to Dan. Does that make you angry? I'm angry about so many things, it's hard to is that one of them? separate them. We'll try. I'm confused. Donneria? <laughs> That's, are you trying to make it sound like gonorrhea or diarrhea? <laughs> oh boy, where is this name Donneria coming from? It's hard to process. And apparently, according to his lawyer, these killers had threatened to kill your brother's family members as well. Did you hear that? I did hear that. And that would be you, right? It would. Were you told that the specific threat had been made by the same people that had killed your ex-husband to kill your brother's <laughs> family members? I was not told. Would that have been information you would have liked to know back in 2014? Yes. Would you have made the same decision to move down to South Florida closer to the killers? No, I would not. And even after the killers were arrested in 2016, you weren't told that that's what was going on the whole time. I found out yesterday. No further questions. Members of the jury are being instructed to disregard the comment of the witness as to the constitutionality of any portion of the Florida statutes. You may oh. Put down. Well, Ms. Able okay, so, um, that was the redirect, but then they do bring her back in. This five minutes. Let's just watch this. Oh God! Look at Charlie! Look at Charlie over there! Oh my God! Look at Charlie! What what kind of bag is that? You got a Chanel bag over there? What she got? Yeah, Chanel, Louis Vuitton. I can't see. Who's whispering? Tableson, you remain under oath. You may be seated. Oh, this is the attorney that doesn't she look like Gwyneth Paltrow? Yeah, um, we listened to her. I thought she looked like Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah, we listened to her in opening. Oh my gosh, guys, my memory. It's a COVID brain, man. Ms. Adelson, we've got two points we need clarification on from you. Um, when we talked about your relationship with uh, Jeffrey Lacasse, we talked about a occasion on July 13th, 2014. It would have been the Sunday before the murder. And on that occasion, did you at your residence that evening, in the context of discussing the relocation issue with involving you and your children moving to South Florida, did you say that Charlie, your brother, this defendant, had explored all options to resolve the problem, including hiring a hitman, oh. and it would cost either fifteen or fifty thousand dollars? Oh, this is by her ex-boyfriend saying this. Hi, what's up, go lucky? How are you? Hello, hello. 
Um, oh, what's her name? Did someone say her name? Oh, I got deleted. <laughs> she looks like Kyle Richards. Uh, Kyle Richards' sister? No, not the messy one. Uh, what was her name again? Um, the one who. Yeah, they would have like crazy fights on camera. What was her name? Oh, that's Sarah Dugan. All right, hi Sarah. We got Sarah here. We got Georgia here. No. And did you have a conversation with Jeffrey Lacoste at your residence that night where you said you wanted to share something in confidence with him? No. Mm. Did you ever mm -mm -mm. say that your brother had seriously hired a hitman where it, you weren't repeating the joke? You no. were serious. All right. And second point for clarification involves that dinner where you got sick at the t dinner table. You recall which, which evening I'm speaking of? I do. This would have been about two weeks to a month after the homicide, I believe. I don't know, man. It's suspicious to me that Wendy would tell Jeff this when they were already either broken up or on the precipice of breaking up. Because I, I, I really am wondering if Wendy all along was really planning on pinning it on her brother, her mom, just in case if anything went down. Because, you know, she wants to make sure that the kids do not go to the Markell family. I feel like Wendy was already kind of like planting seeds everywhere. Because apparently Wendy told multiple people and even like the Geek Squad guys something about the TV and like the hiring the hitman that her brother said. Um, I recall hearing that. And then also her telling her you know, ex-boyfriend or, you know, soon to be ex-boyfriend about what her brother said. It's like, I feel like she's just planting seeds everywhere. That's the vibe that I'm getting. Okay. Oh, Kim. And yeah, Kim Richards. Occasion, did you ever tell Jeffrey Lacoste that Charlie had referred to the dinner as a celebration dinner? No. Did you ever tell Jeffrey Lacoste that it was a celebration dinner? No. No further questions. All right. Defense right. is coming back. Good afternoon. During your uh, interrogation, do you recall Jeffrey Lacoste's name coming up? Yes. And do you recall that it was Jane McPherson who brought up his name, not you? Yes, correct. And do you recall as a result of his name being brought up, he was considered a suspect? Yes. And do you recall that Detective Isom asked you a lot of questions about him? Yes. And he asked you about his car? Yes. And he asked you about his travel schedule? Yes. And he asked you for his information so that he could speak with him, correct? Correct. But you didn't bring up his name, right? No. You didn't try to frame Jeffrey Lacoste for any murder, right? Absolutely not. In fact, Jane McPherson was the one who brought up his name, correct? She was. I have no further questions. Who's Jane McPherson, though? Is Jane McPherson a friend of Wendy? Because maybe that's Wendy's skill right there. Not saying things directly, but just planting seeds everywhere. Her useful idiot, Jane McPherson. <laughs> Hold on, this is a Reddit post. <laughs> uh, is Jane McPherson someone that helped her with the book? Question. We have a book. But Jeffrey Lacasse's name did come up while you were in the interview room being interviewed in reference to the shooting, right? Jane McPherson brought him up. She, she was in the room with you during the interview. For some of it, not for the whole time. Okay, but during the part where Jeffrey Lacoste's name came up, she was in the interview, interview room with you. Yes, she brought him and, up. And this is the same interview that we've referenced previously where you were taken from the restaurant to be told about what happened with Dan. Yes. Nothing further. You may step down, ma'am. Will Ms. Abelson be recalled by either the state or the defense again? I certainly hope not, Your Honor. You remain under subpoena. All right, what happens on day four? Day four. Day four, we got sergeant. Uh, we have undercover agent. No face shown. Is it a wild? Did anyone else think the undercover agent sounded like a freaking cop? Like, sounded like a cop. Like, when he met up with Donna Adelson and when he was on the phone with Donna Adelson, he sounded like a cop. I was like, couldn't they get someone else? Like, oh, he's, he's straight up sounding like law enforcement to me. <laughs> uh, oh, how many special agents did they have undercover? Oh, here's another one. Another undercover agent. Um, gosh. Oh, this is a day where they're playing all the phone calls, right? Recorded calls. The bump is, um, when, when they referenced the bump, was that after the, when the undercover approached uh, Donald Adelson, right? Pretending to be one of the um, hitman's like cousin or something like that to get the money. Um, like the blackmail thing. See, the crazy thing about that was that when they were being blackmailed, they didn't even go to the cops. If they truly were not involved, they would have just been in the cops like, hey, you know, there are these like weird people that are, um, yeah, it's weird. They're, they're trying to blackmail me. That is the bump. Okay. 
The only winners for Charlie was Wendy's, uh, oh, the first attorney. Okay. He looks like a crack. <laughs> I can't imagine him sleeping. I mean, this is stressful as fuck. <laughs> All right, guys. Guys, thanks for hanging out. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed your time here. Uh, today, we covered a little bit of Donald Adelson making her first court appearance. And she'll have another judge assigned to her case. We'll see what happens with that. And then we watch uh, Wendy Adelson's um, testimony today. But I don't know. I'm learning a lot about this case. I haven't really done like a super deep dive on it. I was interested in it when I think, I think like Court TV, um, Vinny Politan was covering this. And I was like, oh, wow, that's actually like bizarre. But I did hear about this a long time ago, a couple of years back when I watched this like true crime video. I remember hearing about how the hitman and like the girl, um, Catherine McVanwell were like, you know, arrested and stuff. And I was like, oh my God, are they not going to get the family? That's crazy. But a couple years passed and I completely forgot that this was still ongoing. But yeah, we'll definitely um, watch the rest of the stuff. And if you guys have any other recommendations, just feel free to post it in the Discord. We do have a true crime section. Uh, feel free to post videos on there. And then um, if there's any other cases that you guys are interested in, let me know. I do want to do a video about Caitlin Armstrong because I'm really sad that the trial was not streamed live. Um, I was looking forward to watching it, but I want to make a video about Caitlin Armstrong because she is bizarre. That whole thing with her, you know, yoga teacher, she escapes to Costa Rica. She gets a plastic surgery. She tries to escape another time running on foot. She was training and that whole thing was just so bizarre to me. Um, I want to cover Caitlin Armstrong. So if there's any other cases that you guys might be interested in, let me know. Um, I do have a new video posted. It's about Suzanne Morphew. And um, yeah, I don't know. That case has just been really interesting to me. It's still an unsolved case, but you know, things aren't looking good for a certain person, but I don't know. We'll see what happens. They recovered her body about two months ago. So maybe they'll re uh, reopen their investigation. And <laughs> all right, guys, that's the happy video for today. All right. We ended on a happy note. There you go. Um, so yeah, we will watch um, Jeff Lacoste interview i guess interview slash uh, maybe watch his testimony as well or wait should i watch the interview first or the testimony first is it an order should we oh no maybe we should do testimony no we'll, we'll do interview first and then testimony how about that order because i think someone told me that the interview was like two hours long so maybe we'll watch that and then we'll watch the testimony and then on a different date we'll watch charlie adelson's uh testimony because i do want to i do want to see him go up there the interview? Okay. So that's will be our plan for, um, yeah, for the next couple of stream times. Interview first. Interview first. Okay. Everyone says interview first. All right. I think um, interview was posted. Let's see. Taxi. Is this it? The interrogations of Sherlock Holmes, like Professor Jeffrey Lacoste. <laughs> what is the title? Thanks for watching on Twitch as well. I appreciate you guys being here. Thank you for your support. Thanks for lurking. Most importantly, having me in the background. And uh, thank you so much for engaging in the chats. I do appreciate that. I hope y'all have a good one. Uh, we have a new YouTube video that's out. Storytelling, true crime stuff. Check it out if you're into it. And other than that, um, there's another case that I want to do another storytelling video on that I'm like super interested in. But uh, if you guys have anything else you want to recommend, let me know. But I hope you guys have a good one. Yeah, take care. See you later. I mean, I feel fine. It's just the lingering cough thing. And then anytime I cough, sneeze, maybe even fart, like I, it, it like hurts my chest. Okay. Anything that I do that requires like, I don't know. It just, it just hurts my chest. It's really annoying. But I don't think it's a lung thing. I think it's just like a muscle thing. Like I just keep tearing the muscle every time I like cough and stuff, which is like, I don't know, it's annoying. But I don't know, we'll see. I mean, maybe I'll go to the doctors. Um, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, I'm not looking forward to it. <laughs> All right, guys, um, I hope you guys have a good one. Thanks for hanging out with me and I'll see y'all later.